Good morning, and uh, welcome to the June 6th Planning Commission zoning hearing. Uh, we're going to start. If you please uh, stand and join me with the Pledge of Allegiance. Let's see. Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. With that, we will go ahead and uh, we have a pretty full agenda, so we will uh, get started. And uh, Jeannie, if you'll go through our agenda for us. Thank you, Mr. Chair and Board. Today's hearing will be conducted with the following process and procedures. Each case is called in numerical order. When a case is called, would the applicant please stand and raise their hand to show that you are here? Then we are going to call to see if there is anyone opposed to the case. We would ask that anyone opposed stand to be counted for the record. After recognizing the applicant and any opposition, the applicant and opposition will be asked to come forward to be sworn in so they can present testimony to the board. The applicant will testify first, then the opposition, if any, will testify second. Each side gets 10 minutes to state their case or concerns. There is a rebuttal process, so please convey all your information to the board within your 10 minutes period. I'm sorry, there is no rebuttal process. So please convey your information to the board within your 10 minute period. Additionally, if more than one person wishes to speak on behalf of a case, we ask that you please coordinate with each other about the points you're going to talk about. Because each side only gets 10 minutes, you do not want to cover the same information twice. After both sides have their 10 minute presentation period, the board will start to discuss the case before them. They may call speakers to come back to the podium for additional comments and questions. After that, the board will render a decision to either approve, deny, or hold the case at hand. There are three cases on today's printed agenda which have been withdrawn without prejudice and will not be heard today. The first case is rezoning case Z55 Kenneth B. Clary, this case has been withdrawn without prejudice, so Z55 of 2022 will not be heard today. Rezoning case Z14 of 2023, Brand Properties LLC, this case has been withdrawn without prejudice, so Z14 of 2023 will not be heard today. And finally, land use case LUP 12 of 2023, Carla A. Garcia has been withdrawn without prejudice. So LUP 12 of 2023 will not be heard today. There are also seven cases on today's printed agenda which have either been continued or held by the board and will not be heard today. The first case is Branch I'm sorry, Z60 of 2022, Branch Acquisition Company. It's been continued by staff until the July 5th Planning Commission hearing. So Z60 of 2022 will not be heard today. Z67, S&B Investments, Inc. Has been continued by staff until the July 5th Planning Commission hearing. So Z67 of 2022 will not be heard today. Z12, 2023, Fernando Shavara has, has been continued by staff until the July 5th, 2023 Planning Commission hearing. So Z12 of 2023 will not be heard today. Z13 of 2023, Matthew C. Flournoy has been continued by the Planning Commission until the July 5th, 2023 Planning Commission hearing. So Z13 of 2023 will not be heard today. Z15, SDP Acquisitions LLC has been continued by staff until the July 5th Planning Commission hearing. So Z15 will, of 2023 will not be heard today. Z18, Icon Renovations LLC has been continued by staff until the July 5th, 2023 Planning Commission hearing. So Z18 of 2023 will not be heard today. And finally, SLUP 6 of 2023 Clark Dare Ventures has been continued by staff until the July 5th, 2023 Planning Commission hearing. So SLUP 6 of 2023 will not be heard today. 
I would like to ask people in today's audience to silence your cell phones. When phones ring, they do interfere with the broadcast and presentations, so please silence your phones. Any person wish wishing to speak before the Board of Commissioners must file a campaign contribution disclosure statement if within two years immediately preceding the filing of a rezoning application, a campaign contribution totaling $250 or more was made to a current member of the Board of Commission. Additional information concerning this announcement is on the table at the back of the room. I want to remind applicants, opposition, and interest in parties that information is due to the board Monday prior to this hearing. Any information submitted after this deadline may or may not be considered by the board at their discretion. With that, Mr. Chair and board, I am ready to start the consent agenda. Thank you. The first case on consent is rezoning case Z16 toys and gift delivery. They're requesting a rezoning from OI to NRC for a bakery in land lot 595 of the 16th district, located on the west side of Sandy Plains Road, north of Piedmont Road. Staff recommends approval subject to the site plan received by the zoning division on March 31st, 2023, with the district commissioner approving minor modifications. Variance, this is stated in the zoning comments, fire department comments and recommendations, arborist comments and recommendations, water and sewer division comments and recommendations, stormwater management division comments and recommendations, and Department of Transportation comments and recommendations. Is the applicant present? Let the record show the applicant is present. Is there anyone here opposed to case Z16? Let the record show there is no one opposed. The next case is rezoning case Z17, Caliber Capital Kennesaw LLC, requesting a rezoning from GC to OMR for a hotel in land lot 651 of the 16th district, located on the west side of Roberts Court on the east side of I-75 exit ramp, south of Ernest Barrett Parkway. Staff recommends approval subject to the district commissioner to approve the final site plan, the district commissioner to approve building elevations, fire department comments and recommendations, variances as identified in the zoning comments, water and sewer division comments and recommendations, stormwater management division comments and recommendations, department of transportation comments and recommendations, and a landscaping plan to be approved by the county arborist with an emphasis on planting within the parking facilities. Is the applicant present? Let the record show the applicant is present. Is there anyone here opposed to case Z17? Let the record show there is no one opposed. The next case is LUP9, Patricia Der Deverger, requesting a temporary land use permit renewal to allow a child care learning center in land lot 631 of the 19th district located on the west side of Crest Ridge Circle, south of Crest Ridge Drive. <laughs> Staff recommends approval for 24 months subject to the maximum of 10 children, two employees, and Department of Transportation recommendations and comments. Is the applicant present? Yes. Let the record show that the applicant is present. Is there anyone here opposed to LUP 9? Let the record show there is no one opposed. LUP 10, Young S. Utash, request a temporary land use permit renewal to allow clothing alterations and bridal gown sales in land lot 126 of the 20th district, located on the east side of Kimberly Road, north of Old 41 Highway. Staff recommends approval for 24 months subject to the maximum number of truck deliveries to be two per day and the maximum number of customers to be no more than three per day by appointment only. Is the applicant present? Let the record show that the applicant is present. Is there anyone here opposed to LUP 10? No. Let the record show there is no one opposed. And the final case on the consent agenda is SLUP5, Caliber Capital Kennesaw, LLC, 
requesting a special land use permit for a hotel on land lot 651 of the 16th district located on the west side of Roberts Court and on the east side of the I-75 exit ramp south of Ernest Barrett Parkway. Staff recommends approval subject to the site plan received by the zoning division on March 31st, 2023 with the district commissioner approving minor modifications. Variances as stated in the zoning comments, fire department comments and recommendations, arborist comments and recommendations, water and sewer division comments and recommendations, stormwater management division comments and recommendations, and Department of Transportation comments and recommendations. Let the record show the applicant is present. Is there anyone here opposed to SLUP5? Let the record show there is no one opposed. And that completes the consent agenda. Thank you. I will uh, entertain a motion to um recommend approval of the consent agenda. Mr. Chair, before, <clears throat> beforehand, can I, can I make a request that we call out the um, Z17 and slot 5 separately from the balance of the consent agenda? You want Z17 and slot 5? Uh, called out separately from the remainder of the cases on the consent agenda. So you want them, you want to hear those today? or? Uh -huh. I, I don't, I'm, I'm not necessarily asking that they, they be heard. If, if we could, um, I, I do have an objection to some of the variances that were requested uh, on Z17 and SLEP 5. Okay, let me ask some questions about the so attorney. Your option is you can, you could as a member uh, have the clerk note that you oppose those items on the consent agenda, or the other option is to pull them from the consent agenda and hear them if you do have objections to okay. some of the I guess, I, guess that, <clears throat> I guess that would be my motion and that we pull those two items or two items from the consent agenda. Okay, so okay. we have a so we have a motion on the table to uh, do we have do we need to do this separate? Do we can we approve the agenda with the exception of the two cases or do we need to have two separate motions? I think just having a motion for the items to move forward on the consent agenda is adequate, and the, the ones that are not included in that motion go on to the agenda to be heard. Thank you for that clarification. Okay, so we have a motion on the table. Do I have a second? Second. Did, did you, motion is not on the table. Motion is not on the table. Uh, I'm going to ask Take uh, away that second. Commissioner Vallon to restate his motion, please. I guess what I'm asking for is that we go ahead and move to approve uh, item cases Z16, uh, LUP9, and LUP10 from the consent agenda uh, as, as by consent. Okay. And do I have a second? Second. Second by Commissioner Anderson. Uh, any discussion? If not, let's call the question. Vote of four to zero. Um, the consent agenda moves ahead with uh, Z16, LUP9, and LUP10. And we will hear um, Z17 and SLUP5 during our regular cases. Thank you. All right, moving into the held and continued agenda, the first case is Z65 of 2022, Draypack Investments, LLC. They're requesting a rezoning from RA5 to RA5 for a single family attached and detached subdivision in land lots 87 and 88 of the 18th district, located on the west side of Michael Road and, the, and south of Vanessa Circle, at the terminus of Linda Drive and at the terminus of Oak Hill Drive. Is the applicant present? Let the record show that the applicant is present. Is there anyone here in opposition to case Z65? One. Let the record show there is one person here in opposition. All those that wish to address the board, please come forward to be sworn.
Good morning. For the record, my name is Park Suff of the law firm of Sam's Larkin & Huff, and I represent Drape Pack Investments in relation to this uh, rezoning application that's before you this morning. Uh, this is a plan or a, a property that has been before you for quite some time. We've made quite a bit of adjustments, but actually uh, it goes back further than that in that uh, this property was owned uh, many years ago to the RA5 category. Uh, here you can see the outline of the subject property. Uh, it's an undeveloped track. It sits um, both e east of, uh, of Maxim Road and west of South Gordon Road uh, and south of Veterans Memorial Highway. Uh, it is owned RA5, so the uh, development plan that we have proposed is consistent with that zoning category. Um, the reason why the case was continued for so long is is initially we had proposed 73 townhomes, and you heard the staff uh, call of the case mentioned detached and attached homes and the initial proposal did have uh, 73 townhomes and additional uh, 24 single family detached homes with a density of 4.99 units per acre uh, we've worked with the uh, county staff uh, a lot of involvement with the Cobb DOT uh, we've also worked with the the neighbors and we have drastically amended the proposal uh, because uh, not only did we reduce, uh, eliminate the attached product, we reduced the density. We're now at 3.24 units per acre at 59 lots, uh, which is um, at, at obviously at three uh, units per acre. That's well within the RA5 category and well within the land use plan and well within the staff recommendation. But uh, also and very importantly, uh, we have changed the access point. Uh, you can see um, from the original site plan that we had here uh, that showed the townhomes. We had access points off of both uh, Oak Hill Drive and Linda Drive were a couple different access points. And we, uh, with consultation with Cobb DOT and concerns from the neighbors, you can see Oak Hill coming into the south there. Uh, the grades as that came in from the south was not uh, the best way to come in. And so it was that with consultation with DOT. Instead, we're coming on off Linda, which is on the right-hand side or the east-hand side of the subject property coming into the property, uh, and then we can execute this plan. Uh, this is if you want to rotate this um, or counterclockwise is the way how, how to look at this. And so now we have a traditional single-family detached uh, neighborhood with accesses off of, um, with one access point off Linda Drive. Um, we have, submitted a revised stipulation letter dated May 18th, and I'd ask that you make the uh, recommendation for approval conditioned upon that stipulation letter. We're also amenable to all the staff recommendations uh, that are contained in the staff comment, with the exception is TOT still has in their comments that, that we're supposed to uh, have our acts, our, all our construction traffic coming off of Oak Hill Drive. That's just a, a mistake that it, it just got carried over did not reflect the change. We do not want any construction or any access off Oak Hill Drive. All the access is off is off Linda, and that just that's the only little tweak to the DOT recommendations. I think DOT um, is fine with that change uh, because it is reflective of our plan is reflective of what they want us to do. Uh, in the past, we've had a lot of neighborhood uh, concerns and questions about the proposal. I think we've got one person here. I'd uh, be glad to, uh, I know there's no rebuttal officially, but I'd be glad to address specifically any questions that, that, that arise from them. But I think it's a pretty straightforward case. Actually, the site plan that was before you has a couple less lots than what was approved in the original rezoning. Uh, and it is all single family detached. Uh, we've got a very detailed stipulation letter uh, that has all the conditions that we would, that are part of this request. And so we ask that you uh, follow your and, and your, your staff recommendation is for approval as stated here. Actually, they had a maximum of four units per acre and we're at 3.24 units per acre. So again, we're well within that. So we ask that you uh, follow the staff recommendation and recommend the approval of this application to the uh, Board of Commissioners in two weeks and be glad to answer any targeted questions that you've got and be glad to answer any specific questions that arise from uh, neighborhood concerns that, that come forward after I present. But thank you for your time. Thank you. Now we'll hear from the opposition. Come.
Hello, uh, my name is Lori Heron, and um, because there's no one else from the neighborhood here to represent the folks from the Linda Drive access, um, we did have a petition opposing the the entrance being there. Um, it, let me back up a sec. We appreciate the fact that the developer has um, lessened the density, and it's now single-family homes. It's a much, much better plan. Um, we just hate the fact that the entrance is going to be through Linda Drive and through our subdivision, but I don't know of any other way for them to access the subdivision except if they get an easement through the county property um, and go in another way. That's the only um, concern that we have is the through traffic through Linda Drive um, going to the subdivision. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Um, there's Excuse me, if there's no one else that uh, is, is to speak on this case. This is in District 4. Unfortunately, Commissioner Hughes is out today, so I'll uh, lead discussion on this particular uh, case. If I can have uh, DOT uh, come up. Michael Francis, DOT. Hey, how are you, Michael? Um, quick, uh, can you walk me through, uh, we just heard uh, from the applicant around the DOT changes and, and what carried over. Can you talk to me about um, what DOT is recommending and uh, the point off Linda Drive? So um, as he stated, the previous um, recommendation was to um, for the construction exits off of uh, Oak Hill, Lee, and Old Alabama. So we want to strike, remove that recommendation. We understand that the access has changed and it will be off of Linda, so. Awesome. Um, can you also talk to me about uh, a recommendation that I got via email yesterday around that the, um, the developer would be responsible for repaving the roadways? Yes, yeah, so for the access off of Linda, we would recommend that any damage to Linda, as well as um, Pinecrest uh, be repaved. Okay. Since think, they're gonna I, use that as their main entrance. Okay, and I think uh, the step I saw said Pinecrest Road, Brenda Drive, Michael Road, um, all three of those would be repaved at the, by the developer, correct? If they're not gonna use Brenda, I'm assuming <coughs> they will likely use Linda as the main access. Okay. So we would, require Linda as well as uh, Pinecrest. Got it. Okay. okay. Any, uh, any other questions for DLT from my fellow commissioners? Any other questions? No? All right. Thank you. Uh, can I have uh, the applicant back up, please? First, I just want to com uh, commend the applicant for for the work that has went into this because it's been a lot of changes to this, and I know there's been a lot of conversations with the neighbors. The, uh, I would like you to address the new opposition today from the neighbors of Linda, uh, and then also could you speak to the DOT, um, what we just heard about the developers, uh, the recommendation that the developers <laughs> would yeah. repave any of the roads used for construction. Yeah, if I can get that uh, image up with the, the roads that was up there a second ago. Um, so this is uh, showing how the access would come off of uh, uh, Brenda Drive, and, and, and certainly this, this shows it very well. You've got a, a road that comes in from Linda Drive from the east, and then you've got one from the south. The grades on the south, uh, initially we were looking at coming in from the south, but the grades were such, and the visibility when you came out was very problematic. So it was agreed that, that the better access point would be to off Linda Drive. Uh, it, it's, you know, it's gonna be one or the other uh, because you can't cross that big, uh, you know, creek area and get back out to Maxim Road to the west. Um, and then DOT's recommendation that, that any damage caused to those roads that we access to get to Linda Drive or Linda Drive and, and the other road, um, that we would repair damages caused by our construction traffic, we'll be glad to, that with that condition. Thank you. Any uh, questions for the applicant? Uh, Commissioner Ballon. Uh, 
Yes, sir. Uh, we, we talked within the last couple of weeks, and uh, I expressed to you my concern that uh, as of right now, you have no rental restrictions on this property. Is that correct? Um, I don't. I don't. It wasn't part of the stip letter. I don't believe. Okay. So, is the intent to have this 100% uh, rentals? I don't think there's an intent. It's going to be a, a fee simple neighborhood, but uh, some rental is an a possibility. Uh, th this Draypack, are they the developer only, or do they intend to hold it? Do you have any idea? Uh, Draypack um, will develop it and then sell more than likely the uh, neighborhood, and they, they may build it. They may sell it for building by someone else. Thank you. Other questions? Commissioner Anderson. Yeah, just following up on, on, on Commissioner Beloin's question about rental. Um, so would there be any opposition to having a, a traditional 10% rental restriction as an additional step on this project? Uh, I'd have to check with my client, but I, I, I think if you want to add that as a condition, that's fine. Okay, great. Thank you. And in part, one, one final question I wanted to, could you clarify the uh, architectural features? Yeah, um, I mean, we, w there was a, a previous condition that said that we would have a mixture, uh, tr traditional styling with a mixture of uh, cementous board siding, uh, board and batten, uh, cedar shakes, uh, and rock and, and brick as a combination of siding materials. Final, dis final uh, architecture be approved by district commissioner. Okay. We, that would be what we would propose. Okay. Thank you. Any other questions for him? All right. Uh, do any of my other commissioners have any uh, other questions of anyone else before I render a motion? Okay. I think I'm prepared to <clears throat> make a, a motion on, on Z65. It's been before us for, for quite some time. In, uh, in preparing for today's hearing, I did have conversations with Commissioner Hughes as well as um, uh, Commissioner Sheffield around this. And again, I, I would be remiss if I didn't commend the applicant for the for the work that's went into the changes here to make this a more suitable uh, project around uh, single home subdivisions particularly, and to really bring that density down to that 3.24. Um, I know we had a lot of, we started this with a lot of opposition and there's been a lot of work. So I do want to commend that. With that being said, I'm prepared to uh, make a motion of that we approve Z65 with the following uh, stipulations. And give me one second while I pull that up. <clears throat> with the following, uh, we recommend that we recommend approval with the following stipulations, that the final site plan be approved by the district commissioner, um, that no variance as requested in the zoning division comment, the maximum density of uh, not to exceed 4.0 uh, units per acre, but that we keep the density at this 3.24 as, um, as designated in the stipulation letter all fire department comments and recommendations, all water and sewer comments and recommendations, all storm water management division comments and recommendations, all DOT comments and recommendations, all stipulations as presented in the revised stipulation letter dated May 18th, 2023. And one additional um, stipulation that no more than 10% of the units uh, will be used as a rental. And with that, that will be my motion. Sec second, with uh, just w w one concern as, as to whether the uh, applicant's comment was met regarding the one DOT requirement. Uh, do we understand that to have been read out by the by the comment of the DOT? Yeah, and thank you for that clarification. I, I do because um, based on the email traffic I saw, DOT did have a revised comment. So I've seen okay. the revised language, but can I can I add to my certainly <laughs> because of that? Let me just add one more. Um, 
specific stipulation to this is that the developer will be responsible for repaving of the following roadways um, utilized during construction, Pinecrest Road, Brenda Drive, and Michael Road uh, would be one other additional step. Second. Any uh, discussion? I'll call the question. If not. Oh, oh sorry. I, I actually, I, I'm in there. I have to move. I actually have to move for... Uh, uh, you, you actually made the motion, so I second. Okay, I'm sorry. Yeah, you second. Good. But any further discussion? And if not, let's call the question. Okay. By a vote of four to zero, we recommend uh, approval of Z65. Thank you. The next case is Z8 of 2023, Tommy's Express by Northgate. They're requesting a rezoning from PSC to NRC for a car wash in Landlot 583 of the 16th District, located on the northwest corner of the intersection of Bells Ferry Road and Ernest Barrett Parkway. Is the applicant present? Let the record show that the applicant is present. Is there anyone here in opposition of Z8? Let the record show there is one person opposed. All those that wish to address the board, please come forward to be sworn in. Good morning. Again, for the record, my name is Park Suff, the law firm of Sam's Larkin & Huff, and I represent uh, Tommy's Express uh, Car Wash in relation to this rezoning application before you. Uh, I'd like to begin by uh, giving you some details about the subject property and some of the uh, features that are relevant for your decision today. Uh, the site uh, is uh, shown there on your uh, aerial photograph showing the property. It's on Ernest. It's at the intersection of two arterial roads. It's the intersection of Barrett Parkway and Bells Fair Road. Uh, it's a signalized intersection. It is basically the gateway to uh, the town center CID. So if you're coming from the east, uh, town center is straight ahead on your right. Uh, you're about to get to 575 at the bottom of, of the hill. Uh, the site is surrounded by, um, on the north and south, by existing uh, shopping centers. Uh, there's a shopping center to the north. It's a public shopping center that wraps the site, uh, comes out on Bells Ferry Road. Uh, the, there's a Barnes & Noble bookstore that's shown right there just to the, to the left, if you will, looking at that. And then across the street uh, at the pin corner uh, is an auto repair shop. Uh, and then a strip shopping center, then Caddy Corner across Piedmont Road uh, is a, um, a pharmacy building, uh, and then across the road is an elementary school. Uh, so that gives you the context for the area. Uh, Zoning-wise, uh, the property is owned uh, planned shopping center, uh, which is not a conforming category because the land use plan is a neighborhood activity center. Uh, this gives you the land use plan in the area. Um, quite frankly, and to be blunt, the land use plan is wrong. <laughs> uh, it shows it as a neighborhood activity center. Anybody with any planning sense knows that the intersection of two RTO roads at the entrance of a regional activity center should at a minimum be a community activity center. Uh, I'm not real sure of the logic behind making that a neighborhood activity center. I'm not sure how relevant it is for our discussion, but it does just emphasize the fact that this is a commercial area with quite a bit of commercial business. And, and you can see from here, as you enter going to the, going to the west, you can see uh, the regional activity center popping up there right next to the interstate uh, as Chastain Meadows is right there. So uh, that gives you the, the area of the property. Uh, and I wanted to talk about um, what's physically on the property. There's a home uh, that is approximately 1830s vintage that sits on the property. Uh, right over the intersection, uh, and there's quite a bit of community questions and concerns about the status of that house. Uh, my client is uh, a, has the property under contract, and this is very important to understand. 
uh, the property owners that have owned it for a very long period of time uh, are needing to sell the property, uh, and they currently own the property. My client has a contract, uh, and they would like to work with the neighbors on addressing the concerns and questions about the, the historic home on, on the property. Uh, but from the property owner standpoint, um, this is uh, not a, a house that has been put on a registry. It is not protected in any form through uh, those programs. Uh, and in terms of zoning, um, it is a co property that's surrounded by commercial. It's currently zoned PSC, which is a non-conforming category. So this board uh, or the board of commissioners of the county eventually has to put it in a conforming category, something that makes sense uh, given the surrounding area. And, and so obviously that's the reason why we asked for NRC. Um, as we've gone through this process, and again, we've got a, um, some questions and con some concerns from the neighbors about uh, the, the nature of the historic structure. My client's uh, proposed use of the property is a car wash. And uh, unlike most other uses, this use can actually share the site with uh, the existing ha house because of the way that our site plan would lay out. Most other uses would demand to have the pin corner uh, if you had a fast food restaurant, which would be something else you would anticipate at this intersection, it would be uh, wanting to be right up on the corner, uh, right where the house is. Uh, so what we have done in working with, with some of the community, uh, we proposed a site plan that actually uh, separates the property into two different uh, tracks, if you will. Uh, the larger tract is uh, going to be designated NRC as our proposal. Uh, and you can see the car wash is uh, parallel to Barrett Parkway. Uh, Barrett Parkway has the full access points. Uh, it's farthest from that signalized intersection uh, so that the turning movements are, are more free the further away you get from that intersection. Uh, and then you come in to the site, you would turn right uh, immediately circulate around, pay at the pay kiosk. Some, there was some question about how this actually flowed. So you'd have the pay kiosks, then you would go through the tunnel and you would be going uh, west towards Town Center Mall through the tunnel, then you would exit the tunnel, and then on the north side of the tunnel building is where you have the vacuum stations. And then you would be able to either uh, come back around and exit at Barrett Parkway, because that's two-way traffic there, or you can continue out to Barrett Parkway, or Bells Ferry Road, excuse me, and exit uh, Bells Ferry Road. Cobb DOT has some conditions that relate to the access there, and they have an either or condition related to that, uh, and that would allow the uh, right turning movements into our site if we reach an agreement with them on doing a deceleration lane for that. Um, so we will either do that or not have a right in off of Bells Ferry Road if we, if we can't accommodate that, that deceleration lane. Uh, but what that does is it leaves a 15,000 square foot parcel uh, that the house can remain on. Uh, and I've submitted a letter uh, dated uh, May 19th which details uh, these conditions. And what we propose is an option A and option B. And keep in mind uh, that the property owners have uh, you know, have it under, have, have it for sale. My client has it under contract, so we need to be able to execute this contract and be able to acquire the property to be able to preserve that corner if possible. And what we propose is that the that there is some uh, a lot of need uh, or request to keep the site, uh, the house on site because it's a historic home. It it tells the story more on site than if it were moved. Um, but we also recognize that that may not, may not be possible. Uh, what we propose is that we would make it all available to either a nonprofit uh, or uh, you know, a government entity that wants to take on that house as a historic home uh, and restore it uh, and make it usable again um, for uh, you know, museum, for cultural uses and things like that. Uh, and so what we've done is we've set off that site and you can see um, how that, if you're familiar with that intersection, how prominent that is. But we also recognize that there is a, a possibility. It's, a, it's an awesome task to think about restoring a home of that age. It's in good shape, we've toured it, the roof's good, the foundation's good, uh, but, but we all know that things are, are very expensive. So 
uh, we do want to recognize the possibility that the house may need to be moved off site. That would be, uh, fir first case would be the best, would be for the house to stay on site. If that can't happen, then the second best scenario would be for the house to be preserved, be moved off site uh, and put it e in either a private setting or maybe a public setting also uh, for, for tours and such. Uh, so we have pr okay, provided that as an option. Yes. You have two minutes. Oh, okay. And um, if that in fact happens, we also st we still propose that the s that the area where the house si sits would remain green space. I mean, it, it's got um, some plantings on it that that are of historic character, uh, and it would be a nice uh, pocket park, if you will, in the in that area. And the gr grades all work. Uh, and our site wraps around it. Uh, we ha again, I've submitted a letter dated May 19th with stipulations. One of the th other questions and concerns had to do with the look of the building. Uh, we've agreed to this uh, architectural look. The, their standard look is a lot more red to it, and so we've agreed to, to making it a little more gray. Uh, this is a picture taken in the 1940s of that home. Um, this is if you're on Bells Ferry Road. Um, Think of how different that was. <laughs> uh, that's the house on, uh, obviously, as you're heading north, or go, heading south, excuse me, on Bells Ferry Road. And this is uh, the site, uh, Bells Ferry would be on your right, uh, Barrett Parkway, which it was not Barrett Parkway back then, is crossing right there again. This is uh, that prominent look of that house. And again, if the house stays, great. Uh, we welcome uh, the possibility of that being restored and rehabilitated to a usable condition for cultural uses and or if it's moved this is, would be will be an attractive uh, entrance to the town center CID uh, with a green space and pocket park that would be there so we've hope we've addressed both options and uh, we'll be glad to address any questions and concerns that come up thank you All right, thank you now we'll hear from the opposition Hello, my name is Trevor Beeman. I'm the executive director of Cobb Landmarks Historical Society. Uh, we've been working with the property owner and potential uh, buyers since 2019 to try to find a solution for this property. Um, commend the applicant for this offer. Um, if the zoning application is approved and if the applicant is in fact willing to split the lot, uh, we ask that the home and property um, be conveyed to a historic preservation nonprofit. Um, examples would be Cobb Landmarks, the Georgia Trust for Historic Preservation, or the Cobb Preservation Foundation, and that those organizations would be able to help uh, put a preservation easement on the house, um, make repairs to preserve the house, and then also find a suitable use for it. And I say suitable use because our, our opinions as nonprofit organizations that run historic properties, this is not a good uh, location for a cultural center. So what we'd be recommending would be a low impact office use or something similar to that. Um, we would also like the applicant to give Cobb Landmarks permission to arrange for the removal of the other structures that are on the property. Uh, there are several uh, barns and outbuildings that we've arranged with folks who are interested to remove those and rebuild them on uh, other locations in Cobb County. Um, and those are not addressed currently. Um, so that is all I have to comment. Unless anybody has any questions. Thank you. We'll all probably right, call thanks. you back up, but thank you. All right, this is uh, in District 3, so I will turn it over to Commissioner Dance to lead our discussion. Thank you. If, if I could have Mr. Huff come back, please. <clears throat> Parks, if you could first address the, the most recent comments made as to what kind of discussions are ongoing and what would be appropriate in terms of negotiations with respect to the alternatives that your client has presented. Yeah, uh, and let me start um, going backwards. The, qu the request to uh, the structures that are on site, there's barns that are all outside that 15,000 square feet. <coughs> We'd be glad to make them available to Cobb Landmarks for movement off-site. Uh, so that, that was one of the things he's requested is that the 
structures outside the area that we're showing being preserved. Um, you know, our, our goal is that, is that first goal would be that the house be able to be preserved on site. However that is done, uh, and whoever's got the best proposal with a track record of success and, and getting that done will support and we'll be glad to work with anybody that, that has ideas on, on it. Um, and then, you know, again, option B is if, if, if the site, if the house needs to be moved off site, we'd still preserve the site as a historic looking site. Um, but, but I, you know, I don't disagree with, with anything that Trevor said. We all have the same goal. We want it preserved. Okay. Um, um, spe specifically, um, your client is um, is uh, at, uh, in agreement with the stipulations that have been offered by staff. Correct. Okay. And and if you could just address the traffic issue and the the recommendations as to access of Bell's Ferry Road, because I think that's something that's also proposed in the alternative, either either it's closed or it's open and, and your client makes a contribution, is that right? Yeah, this is a, um, uh, the the Bells Ferry Road entrance is, is the one that DOT has an alternative request, and one is either no right in uh, off of Bells Ferry Road, or if we do a right in, we would have to do a deceleration lane uh, in compliance with DOT regulations. That's typical requirement is a deceleration lane. Uh, because this is tied in with a potential other road project, they wanted us to escrow those funds for that to be done as part of a, a larger project potentially. Uh, there's also, as you can see, that intentionally that drive is kicked as far north as we can get. Um, so that would put the deceleration lane, depending on whether right of way is there, we might need to acquire some additional right of way from the adjacent property owner, which is a commercial use. Um, I presume they wouldn't have a problem with that because I think that would actually help their uses too to have that right turn movement uh, as just generally in this area. So we will either comply with uh, not having an access, a right in on, on that site, on that access point, or we will stipulate uh, the to the condition that we would escrow those funds. Okay, and that's a decision to be made down the road? Yeah. Correct. Um, trying to decide which, which path to follow. Can you tell us um, on this um, site plan that everybody's looking at now, what the flow of traffic looks like, both from uh, Barrett Parkway uh, through the site? Yeah. From Barrett Parkway also, as it would be from Bells Ferry. Yeah, so if you're on Barrett Parkway, let's say you're coming from Piedmont Road, you cross Bells Ferry, now you're on Barrett Parkway. Uh, you would turn right into the site on from Barrett Parkway, and then you would immediately turn right there, and that gets you to the pay station. So that's where you would go in, and uh, the, uh, Tommy's is a um, modern car wash. One thing I, I forgot to mention, car, car washes, um, the only way to responsibly wash your car is with a modern car wash that recycles. That's what this is. And a lot of their customers have programs where they have sign up for, you know, as many washes every month for a monthly fee. So you, they, when you go through there, there's a barcode, you just then go in and then you circle around and then now you're entering the tunnel and that's the wash tunnel. That's where uh, modern state-of-the-art equipment uh, cleans the car safely. Uh, and efficiently and again recycles the water then you would exit there and then this is uh, now you have the vacuum stations where you would go and vacuum your car out and those vacuum stations are on that side there so you've got uh, multiple vacuum areas to be able to vacuum out now when you leave the site you could either keep going up to Bells Ferry Road and turn right on Bells Ferry Road or you can because it's two-way traffic on the far west hand side of this site plan uh you can come back out to barrett parkway so if you can go to the west left hand side left 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 west west keep going left 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 so then you could come back out and just go right back out that way yeah and and so um that's 
access off of Barrett? Is there also egress on back onto Barrett from this plan mm -hmm. or not? Yeah, that full DOT has approved full access on Barrett Parkway because we're far enough removed from the signalized intersection. Okay, but if you followed the course that you just directed us through the car wash out to the right, you're following out to the back. Does it also loop back around for you to exit onto Barrett? Yes. Okay. Yeah, you would just come back around um, and then come back out that way. Oh, you after, after you vacuum, you can... You'd reverse direction. Yeah, and that's, two, that's designed for two-way traffic on that western driveway. Okay, and just to clarify, when you reference the Bells Ferry access, whether it's either right in, right out, or right in, or just right out, is that yeah. a second option? Yeah, it, it could. it's either going to be right in, right out, depending on if we escrow for the deceleration lane. Right. If we agree to no right in, then it's just going to be a right out only. Okay. And so you could exit the site from yeah Yep, from you can road. exit on Bells Ferry Road. Okay. And, and, you know, as a convenience type use, you rely, they heavily rely upon a right in, right out movements. People will, you know, make this part of their traffic routine and pull in <laughs> when it's convenient, turning rights. Well, speaking of traffic routines, do you, do you, have you contemplated or considered that this might become some kind of cut through? Uh, yeah, certainly that's going to be an issue for us to, uh, that may may not be really a problem, but I can see that as Bell's Ferry, the right there is no right turn lane uh, on to Barrett Parkway from Bell's Ferry. Uh, so if you're sitting there waiting to be able to turn on Barrett Parkway and you're waiting for that light to clear, uh, it's going to be look mighty enticing to turn right and cut through our site and come out on Barrett Parkway. Okay, so that is something that's we, on your horizon anyway. Yeah, we've, we've contemplated that that's going to be something that we will might deal with, but, you know, we've got plenty of width through there, so people can do that if, if that, in fact, happens. Okay, and, uh, I, and I just want to address the, um, the nature of the rezoning request as a split zoning. Yeah. And, and you and I have had some conversations about that. Um, I have some reservations because... You have a situation where you have uh, the house may remain, the, ho or the house may not remain, and if the house does not remain, I have a concern about uh, putting a permanent um, designation on the part where the house may or may not be um, as a low-rise office, especially if it winds up being dedicated as green space. So do you have some thoughts as to how that might be cleared up? Well, I think the conditions cl cleared up somewhat, uh, but I agree that, you know, you're going to have, I mean, what we're proposing, again, this is based upon some feedback from the, from the staff and from the community, put an LRO on the corner uh, because that use of that house, as, as Trevor mentioned, maybe there's some office component to it. LRO fits with that. Um, if the structure remains. If correct. the structure remains. If the structure removes, I mean, I, you know, my client has design this to work around it so that I mean, I'm not going to sit here and fight for a zoning category on a piece of property that the use is going to be dictated by the steps on it so uh, I, I guess I would also lean to the county <laughs> to, to have an opinion as to what's the appropriate way to handle it from a zoning category but I, you know from my client's perspective you know we can call it you know Zoning X. I mean, it, it's, it's kind of an, it becomes sort of irrelevant if the house is removed. If the house stays, I think LRO makes a lot of sense. And if the house is removed, um, is the intention that the um, property remain with the, your with the applicant or some something else? If the house is removed, removed. then uh, I, I think our goal would be to get it into uh, someone's hands that could manage it as a uh, maybe a community garden a community green space quite frankly at that point it at a signalized intersection it kind of makes sense to be maybe Cobb County land as DOT you know at potential road improvements in the future kind of 
options and or a pocket park, um, you know, as you, because there's transportation plans for, you know, bicycle improvements, getting, you know, multi-use paths, getting sidewalks and everything. So this corner just makes sense to be set off as green space if the house is not there. And um, I, we would prefer not to own it, but if we have to keep owning it, they will. Okay, and, and if the house were to remain, I'm not uh, understanding from the site plan what the access to the structure yeah. would be. Um, if the house remains on site, we would uh, punch a driveway from our driveway off of Bells Ferry Road into the site. DOT would never approve two dr commercial driveways or two, com uh, two driveways there. The driveway that currently serves the house is too close to the signalized intersection, so you want to move it further away. So the best way to access the site would be just internally from our, there and, and from our driveway. And there's pavement already in that area, so it'd be nothing to connect that pavement grades work right there and everything. So that we would just have an internal access to that use. So though, if designating that property as LRO, I mean, what would be the accommodations for parking and things of that nature? Yeah, there is a, um, already there's a, a wide amount of asphalt right there. There's a covered carport uh, with a couple of spaces. So there is um, even already paved probably sufficient parking for most uses of that house. Okay, but that's not, none of that is No, we haven't, we haven't designed it because until someone comes forward with a proposal that is, we're ready to, you know, accept we, there's no reason to site plan that site. Okay, and do you, um, what, based upon your understanding of the proposed use, um, what are the peak hours of use for car washes? What are the peak hours? Mm -hmm. uh, the peak hours are uh, mid-morning and uh, after work. And what is the proposed hours of this operation? Of, of this operation? Mm -hmm. Uh, I'm going to phone a friend, but I think it's 7 a.m. to 9 p.m. Okay. And All right. And so how many cars do you anticipate during peak hours? I think there's, I want to get the traffic counts there. Um, right. During peak traffic times, they anticipate up to 100 cars per hour. Okay, and so what is the, um, how many cars do you expect to use the property on a daily basis? On a daily basis? Yeah, or weekly. I, I'd have to get the, de we're working on that. And let me too pull up, trying to get the DOT comments. Well, just respecting, you know, some some comments that I have heard is, do we need a car wash at this location? If you could just speak to the need. Yeah, I, I, I'd be glad to. Um, so, and got to my to the DOT comments that I couldn't re remember the numbers. Uh, there's 24,500 cars per day on Barrett Parkway. Uh, there's 11,000 cars on Bells Ferry Road. So that gives you an idea of the amount of traffic in this area. And the reason why they want a car centric use at an intersection with two major roads. And so the need is that they, if you uh, read the studies, they do not recommend that you wash your car at your home in your driveway. That for, for Carl Carver can be called out here and, and attest that they don't 
Stormwater does not like you washing your car at your house. Uh, so the only way to responsibly wash your car is we're using a modern car wash that recycles. And so they put the car washes in areas that have high traffic patterns uh, so that people make it part of their routine driving that they would go in there and they want the monthly subscribers so that they just pop in when they're on their way to work or on the way home uh, when it's convenient. So that's how, that's the need. Um, and there's always an, a need for, for this use when you have this type of traffic. Okay, and, and do you have, uh, as part of your plan, variance requests? What are those? Yeah, okay. I don't believe that we have any variances showing up on you. Okay, well, with respect, does that include with respect to the LRO portion? Yeah, I mean, right now, the, it, it, as long as there's no buffers, that, as long as you don't do anything on the zoning that would require a buffer between LRO and, and the other use, then we're fine. Hi, does any other member of the board? Yeah, other, other, other questions for the applicant? Uh, Commissioner Anderson? I, I just, just had a quick question on, on the site plan. The, on the diesel lane on Ernest Barrett, do you have any sense of how many cars can queue um, on site right now, kind of leading up to your pay stations? Like what the queuing capacity is on site? I'm just trying to think if there's any for 100 cars per hour. Um, yeah, I, obviously times. the deceleration lane on Barrett Parkway um, is not designed to, to queue right. cars, ho hopefully not. I mean, obviously in a stream situation, they, they'd like to have that access right away there for that, but it's not designed, so it, it's designed to get people off the roadway cleanly. Uh, the, once you enter the site, um, there's probably, a, you know, in, and you've got a couple different pay stations, so you've got two driveway widths there. So you got uh, ability to stack 20 cars uh, prior to getting out to the driveway that accesses Bear Parkway. Yeah. So is it like a, a single fine line, single file line that then kind of branches off into it, two it, it's separate pay stations? It's double at the beginning and then okay. gets to single as it enters the tunnel. So for, okay. for, for waiting, queuing, you've got a double drive there. And, and do you have a sense of how many cars could queue on site on site, um, I mean, yeah. I, it's, I think with the double there, I mean, you're talking easily 20 cars could be queuing between um, between getting to the pay station and then you'd even add some more after the pay station because you got double lanes. Got it. And, and just to be clear, so when you're talking about 100 cars per hour, is that just saying at any given time there are 100 cars in the whole system, cars getting washed, cars queuing? That's cars for parking, like over like, one hour period, you might get up to 100 cars. Okay. System-wide? Yeah. Okay. All right. Great. Thank you. I just wanted to make sure. Okay. On the questions, I have one, not to make you revisit the, the house again, but we heard from the opposition, three uh, organizations that are possibilities. What is the likelihood, <clears throat> and, I, and you may not know this, but I'm just trying to get the likelihood of the house staying or the house going? Um, like, what are the negotiations looking like? What are those conversations look like? Yeah, I mean, and, and, and keep in mind, I mean, um, we've been able to get in the house a couple of times with, with some folks. Uh, it's it, my client just has it under contract. It's still owned by the property owner. They could have they have the right to go out there and, and, and remove the house with a proper demo permit at any time. So, we're working to try to get to a situation where we can ensure the long term viability of the house. Uh, the way, the philosophically how I've looked at that question is even if it's a 5% chance the house can remain on site, it's worth trying to see if that will work. So I haven't, I mean, I haven't, that's, that's my comfort level to say, even if it's a, even if it's a low percentage chance, I hope it's more than 5%, but my analysis is even if it's a low percentage point, there's no harm in trying. And the fact that we've got organizations and, and what I hope can happen is that we can have a proposal come forward that, that uh, keeps the house on site and, and uh, has long-term viability for the structure itself. Thank you. You have another question? Commissioner Anderson? Yeah, just one quick follow-up. I think um, Mr. Beeman had said that their recommendation was to have a preservation easement put in place. It seems like, so if the house was moved, 
that preservation easement would effectively yeah, allow would. that to remain in perpetuity as open space until otherwise changed? Um, is that your understanding? or? Yeah, I think that relates to the structure. If the structure is removed, I think then the zoning conditions would keep it green space and less revisited by a separate zoning action. Okay, got it. So the preservation easement no longer would apply if the I, structure was I would was rely upon Trevor to, to answer that, but I believe that okay. the, the preservation easement would be for the house remaining on site. Okay, got it. Just wanted to make sure. Great, thank you. Okay. All right, I'll turn it back to you, uh, Commissioner Dant. Question and follow up. You know, um, if if it's green space or or if it's a, a house, either one, what kind of agreements would exist that um, provided for the perpetual maintenance and preservation? Yeah, I mean, we would be hoping that a, a nonprofit would take it over to be maintaining it. Obviously, if it's not, my client would be responsible for maintaining it. If the house is removed, it's currently a basement. Uh, it would obviously any conditions of removing it would require that the site be graded back to the uh, graded condition so that it can be, you know, functional green space. Okay. Are, are, are those stipulations that you could also include in your yeah. cover letter? Yeah. You know, just for the future. Yeah, we'd be glad to do that. Contemplation. And if, if I could take two, two seconds, I just wanted to mention the fact that um, Carol Brown worked very hard and, and doggedly to push my client to be able to preserve this corner. Uh, I, I want to thank her for that. I also want to just recognize that um, there, there someone spoke in opposition, but it's not really total opposition. Uh, we've worked really hard to get to a point where this room isn't full of people that are, are you know, you, it's rare to have a prominent corner with a historic home on it and, and the room not full of people who have questions and concerns. If someone else wants to come, they can come. Okay, well, let me go a different yeah. direction first and then go back. Okay, if, if I could... Um, Ask the county attorney um, on this issue of the split zoning and the um, the LRO in particular. Uh, my my question is, if something is zoned LRO and there are these are alternatives out there, how does that get cleaned up once the alternatives are resolved? Or is there a better approach? Certainly, this, the Planning Commission and ultimately the Board of Commissioners have to contemplate those variables for the, for the long-term zoning classification of that, that property. And as to your question, uh, certainly split zonings um, is an, op are an option for this, but I think with the variable of whether a house stays or not, you could, have, you could offer a reversionary clause perhaps, if not at a time certain, that an action occurs or not, then that portion would revert to a full zoning with the remainder of the property or it remains if, if the historic home stays there on that site. But that's certainly at the discretion. And of course, there could always be subsequent um, rezonings, especially if I think there was a mention of if the house was moved, it'd be a pocket park or something or a donation to the county. The county can certainly then ask to, to rezone the parcel from LRO back to a a public institution or a park or something. So your response is that if it is split zoned, there could be conditions under which it could be returned if that's not the, if, if the structure doesn't remain on the property. Yes, I believe that's an option at the discretion ultimately of the Board of Commissioners. Um, okay. the rec your recommendation today could could spell that out, what those scenarios would look like. And, the, and another option would just not make it a split zone, that is subject a, to other conditions that have been described. Well, that would be a less complicated option, right. but yes. Okay. 
Anybody else? Any further questions for the county attorney? No. Okay, and I think there's some interest. Um, if Trevor could come back up, please. I'll recognize uh, Commissioner Belong to ask a question for Trevor. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, uh, so you you say you've been working on this since 2019? Correct. <laughs> okay. Uh, so this house has existed since some point in the 1830s? Uh, 1840s. 1840s? Yes. All right. Uh, and uh, uh, yeah. my understanding from the fact, for example, uh, General Howard, for whom the university is named, occupied a house on, uh, it's my understanding, occupied a house out on uh, uh, Burn Hickory Road uh, for, for a period of time. Mm -hmm. Uh, during the Battle of Kennesaw Mountain, was this house, did it have any significance? It was used as a headquarters um, during uh, local skirmishes, and there are also um, unverified stories that it was used as a hospital. Um, There's supposed to be blood stains um, on the floor. When we went to inspect the house, there were carpets over the floor, so we didn't disturb those, but um, so we weren't able to verify that. I just remember at one point there was talk of the National Park Service trying to create a, some sort of assemblage or some sort of no, to uh, tell, to that tell. takes an act of Congress literally so we went through that for three years with the Wallace house on Burnt Hickory okay. um, getting it to be part of the national battlefield um, since it's not contiguous it's generally frowned upon to add parcels piecemeal to to battlefield parks okay uh, by the government so you've been working on this for four years what's your best prediction as to what's going to happen? Uh, initially, we, we were under the impression that the entire site would be developed, so our plans were always to try to remove the house from the property. Um, when we found out that there was interest in possibly splitting the lot and de moving the development to the back, that opens a possibility to bring in a partner. So the for us, the best option, and we're working pretty quickly because we just found out about the lot split last week. Uh, tomorrow, I'm meeting the Georgia Trust for Historic Preservation at the house. They have what's called a revolving fund. So they take distressed historic properties, they stabilize them and make them marketable, and then they put a preservation easement on it and then sell it to someone who will finish the project and move into it. Typically, those are residences, but in uh, situations like this where they're in commercial areas, they're turned into offices or things like that. So the um, office designation could be beneficial to, to that effort. Yeah, it would make it more marketable. Um, when they do go to sell it with a preservation easement on it. Um, one of the closest revolving fund properties that's been done is in Ackworth. It's the Cowan House. It was done in 2009 through the Georgia Trust Revolving Fund, and it's an office right now, but it's also an 1840s house in a highly commercial area. So the, the, the concept of a split zoning with an LRO with some sort of historic designation uh, easement placed on it that yes. you think that would be beneficial? Yes, and Georgia Trust would put the easement on it and they would be responsible for, for uh, checking in on the property to make sure it's being maintained properly and historically accurate on the exterior only. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. Any further questions? Thank you. Thank you. Okay, I'll turn it back to uh, Commissioner Dan. Okay, um, if uh, Mr. Carver could come forward and, and speak to this proposal? Is that, or is it, are you not the right person? Can you, can you speak to the proposal and, and, and the staff comments on it? Yeah. Carl Carver, Cump County Stormwater. So um, Mr. Huff has described the the type of car wash facility this is and the recycling of the of the um, water. Um, do you have comments on that? And what what are, what are y'all's observations in looking at this application? Generally speaking, when people wash their cars, and I, I guess that's what you're alluding to, is uh, a lot of people will use detergents that are not good for the environment, um, not good for the grass, the landscaping and stuff like that. So automatic car washes do use recycled water, which in general is recycled and uses less water from the county system. So um, 
and is is has less runoff and and from this site it will be they will have i assume they don't have it indicated but to follow the stormwater requirements for Cobb County, they will have an underground system um, that will tie into the infrastructure probably on Ernest Barrett. Uh, most of it um, drains to that southwest corner now, and so they'll connect into the infrastructure there, but prior to that, it will be filtered through runoff reduction and or, or oil water separators. Okay. The, uh and I, I know that a lot of that will occur at the plan, plan review. review process. Correct. Right? But right now, do you have any um, reservations about the use of this property? No, they'll have to meet the standard requirements for uh, evaluating the capacity of the infrastructure system on Darnus Barrack. That's all part of normal plan review. Okay. Anybody else? Any other questions for Stormwater? Thanks, Carl. And is um, DOT here? Michael Francis, DOT. Hey, Michael. Um, so, are, are you you're part of the review process here, and you've heard the description today that um, as to the write in, write out options. Um, is there anything that you heard in the discussion that is inaccurate or are those y'all's recommendations? Yes, it was um, accurate actually. Um, we're not recommending the right in. However, if they do not build the right in, we're asking for that they um, contribute for the right turn lane. Okay, so when you say you're not recommending the right in, are you actually recommending that there be no access off of bells? Well, no right in, but we are okay with the right out off of bells. Okay. That's very but the right out is what would trigger the contribution request the right in the right in would trigger yes. the contribution request yes. okay and the right out okay sorry i got confused um all right and access off of uh, barrett parkway um, um is that far enough south not where not south my directions are confused but is that far enough away from the major intersection not to interfere with left turn lanes yes it, it is yeah we're okay it's um it meets our requirements the distance the spacing from the signal for the okay. full access okay so full access both left in and right out yes okay all right anybody else? any other questions for dot no thank you mike okay anybody want to talk to anyone else um could, could i uh request like a a break at this point yeah just to just to contemplate if we've closed off our comments then just to contemplate it now would be an appropriate time we hadn't done that but i'll do it <laughs> so we're going to take a recess for uh 10 minutes and uh, resume at 28 after. Thank you. <clears throat> <clears throat>
Welcome back to the uh, Planning Commission zoning hearing. And we are in the middle of discussing Z8 of 2023 uh, in District 3. And so with that, I will turn it back to uh, Commissioner Dance. Um, I would like to make some general comments and then allow fellow commissioners to jump in here as needed. Um, first of all, I, I very much appreciate the uh, applicant, the community, staff, um, everyone who's been involved in these discussions and gotten us to a place where it, it really seems like there is a um, consensus as to an appropriate solution, though the means to uh, arrive at that solution still seem a little unclear to, to me. Um, I. Um, my personal opinion is I'm, I'm not sure that split zoning is the appropriate vehicle, but as council has said, there are different ways of dealing with that. Um, I think it is um, uh, beneficial, um, obviously, to preserve um, the historic preservation element and the corner, and I'm very appreciative that that, that was not necessary, but that the applicant um, entertained and were, has worked with the community on that. So. Um, I um, would like to hear if anyone else has any comments before I proceeded to make a motion. Any fellow comments from the fellow commission? Nope. Not this time. Okay. All right. So um, at this time, then, I would um, like to um, move um, to recommend approval of the, um, at least the, the concept um, that is presented by council here of a um, um, split zoning, um, but with, with comments to council um, and to participants in this process to be considered um, as this makes its way toward the um, board of uh, commissioners. Um, with respect to the um, split zoning issue, my concern is that um, there, if, if it does not become a reality that the structure remains on the property, I'm not saying that's what will happen, but if it does, then I think that um, um, Mr. Johnson is correct that having some kind of reversionary clause that would be reflected in the documents would be appropriate, and I would ask Mr. Huff if he might uh, be able to address that and actually to structure some of that into his letter of stipulations, and I would recommend that some um, some additional work go into those stipulations um, to include things such as a time certain for determining whether or not the contingency um, is uh, feasible for the um, structure to remain on the property or not, because I don't think that is something that can hang out there indefinitely, um, to make some provisions for what the uh, who has control if it's green space and um, who's actually the owner and what the process might be um, in, in that eventuality. So um, those are my general remarks and that would be my motion. We have a motion on the table. I'll entertain a second. Second. I have a second from Commissioner Anderson. Any discussion? If not, let's call the question. Okay, by a vote of four to zero, we recommend approval of Z8 um, <clears throat> of 2023. Thank you. All right, the next case is Z9 of 2023, Aguas Vivas Centro Familiar de Adoración. Um, is requesting a rezoning from R20 to R20 for a church in land lots 386 and 412 of the 18th district, located on the north side of South Gordon Road, east of Starling Drive. Is the applicant present? Let the record show that the applicant is here. Um, is there anyone here in opposition of case V9? Let the record show there are two people opposed. All those who wish to address the board Please come forward to be sworn in.
Good morning. Good to see you again. <laughs> okay, my name is Maya Radovic, uh, and uh, um, I would like to thank again the Planning Commission member for this opportunity to again represent the applicant, Aguas Vivas Centro Familiar de Articon Incorporated. Uh, uh, also, this time I would like the most recent update on the project team communication with the Mableton Improvement Coalition Zoning Committee and addressing the comments we got on the last hearing on May 2nd. The project team had a chance to have a meeting on May 16th with the committee members. Based on our conversation, some additional items have been required to get a better understanding of the applicant intent to develop the property in question. Based on the meeting discussion, the project team revised the site plan, lightning plan accordingly, and provided hydrology letter. Uh, so we, have, uh, we got basically a list of those requirements. So I'm gonna start first. A uh, width of the driveway entrance is provided on the revised plan showing 24 feet in width. Buffer delineation on the potential stream instead of the approximate stream location on the west side is shown, 75 feet buffer. Proposed detention pond location. The hydrology letter regarding detention modeling has been prepared by KC Glazer with Columbia Engineering. Dumpster area location is shown with appropriate screening, which could be a, a fence, landscape, or something else to hide the dumpster for the homes nearby. The area has to be accessible to track as shown. The dumpster pad area square footage will be 12 by 12, and uh, details will be provided during the plan review procedure. Signage info, uh, brick and wood monument signage is shown on the plan. Uh, there's no any uh, extension in the future uh, regarding building or parking. Landscape buffer, uh, as designated landscape buffer as shown on the plan will be maintained. These buffers will cons uh, consist of natural vegetation that exists currently on the site. The stipulation letter prepared by the applicant has been provided, and I have that letter uh, signed by the applicant this morning as well. Uh, lightning plan um, uh, that will not adversely affect the surrounding properties uh, has been provided as well, and uh, applicant is providing a stipulation letter on this requirement as well. Uh, again, there are no existing or changing conditions affecting the use of development of the property. Uh, the property was previously approved to be a religious facility, non-profit organization, this case as well, that was never built. The applicant is aware that site building design prepared by a licensed professional will be a subject of the community development standard <clears throat> excuse me review process the applicant is willing to work closely with cup county to best meet compliance with the standard regulations and requirements per section 134 uh, to 122 of the official code of cup county uh, uh, this morning uh, we have also Mr. Michael Crawford, uh, and he can provide more information on the turn line waiver request review by Cobb County Department of Transportation. All right, you argued that? Yeah, I okay. guess. Okay. I guess that's it. Okay, thank you. For now. <laughs> yeah, uh, we will have more questions, but you can have a seat. <laughs> thank you. You can have a seat. We'll hear okay. from the opposition. Thank you so much. <clears throat> Okay, uh, I'm Steve Young from the Mableton Improvement Coalition. Um, we uh, oppose this uh, proposal because uh, the land use is really far too intense for this area. The area uh, uh, here is on South Gordon, which is a fairly busy, busy road. There's a, a large commercial 
um, activity to, to the west. Uh, this area here is all residential. To the north is a uh, undeveloped property that is going to be a park later on. Uh, the proposal for um, the church here um, is for 246 seats in the sanctuary. It's cut down from 600 seats. Um, and the usage was cut down to 10 hours a week, from 40 hours a week, but there was no indication given as to, you know, what happened to the other 30 hours. So, you know, we don't know really what's going to happen. And really, even if they started out at 10 hours a week, there's no way to enforce that. So it doesn't really, um, that doesn't really mean anything. Also, you know, county ordinances allow a school to be added to, to a church with, um, with you know, no, no further um, input from the community. And that also would increase the uh, intensity of the land usage in this area. There is uh, a parking lot um, that uh, would be lit and the light would interfere with the uh, quality of life of the uh, surrounding neighbors. Uh, and also the noise from the activities in the, in, in, in the facility and on the grounds itself would also interfere with that. Uh, traffic would be particularly uh, intense around uh, service time, but also other times when other activities would be going on in, 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 the, in the facility. Uh, there's not enough frontage uh, on this property to accommodate a decel lane and um, the uh, applicant has also requested a waiver for a left turn lane. Um, they did add, uh, the applicant was correct, there were certain um, additions to the uh, land use, the uh, site plan that were added. Uh, but some of the things that were missing were a landscape plan. Um, the signage is indicated at the front, but uh, there's no indication as to whether it's electronic or just uh, a regular sign. And if it's electric, it would be lit up at night and um, it, would sh it would shine into the neighbor's uh, front yard. Uh, you can see here at the entrance on South Gordon, there are two pieces of property in front of the facility itself. And light coming from the facility and the parking area in the front of the, of the, of the, of the, uh, the building itself and also from the signage would be shining into the property and there's no indication as to how to mitigate that at all. So it would be an absolute nightmare for those people living there, really not only on Sundays, but really 24 hours a day, seven days a week. There's no uh, landscape, as I say, there's, uh, the detention pond has been included, but there's no landscape plan included. So we're really not sure if the existing landscape would really even do any good in buffering the neighbor's property from the, the sight and sound pollution uh, generated by this facility. Uh, it had been suggested in the past that the properties are deep enough that they could buffer themselves, but it really shouldn't be a neighbor's obligation to fix a problem caused by somebody else. So uh, we don't think that's a very uh, workable solution. Next slide, please. Um, traffic uh, letter was submitted, which indicated that um, this, the, the traffic wouldn't be so bad compared to if this facility was developed into a uh, neighborhood, you know, with 46 homes. But that's really an invalid comparison. You should be comparing it to what it's designed for now, which is a meditation center with 15 parking spaces, and this usage is far too intense and far greater than that would be. Um, the building size was reduced, uh, but there's no indication really that, there's, or there's no way to prevent this building from being expanded in, in the future. Um, so we, we just uh, think that this is uh, a far more, um, too intense use for this land, this uh, area was designed really to be a neighborhood, to be homes, and we think it should remain that. Um, we certainly have no objection to the idea of a, a church in this area 
we were further down South Gordon towards Factory Shoals, we think that would be a better location for it. Um, and that's really all my comments. You have a balance of four and a half minutes. Hi, my name is Sherry Van Velser, and I'm a resident um, on one of the properties that this backs up to. And I have spoke to the neighbors in the neighborhood, and we have submitted a 20, a 30 plus uh, petition opposing this build. Uh, my backyard would run right into their parking lot. So my bedroom would face all the lights from the parking lot. So we are opposed to a building in this size and capacity in the neighborhood. This is a quiet neighborhood. We've been there 20 plus years. And we didn't object to the meditation center back in 2012, but this scope is way too large for the area. It, the traffic, the noise, um, and it would be better served if it could be um, the residential and keep the integrity of the neighborhood. That's pretty much it. Thank you. Any questions? We will call you up when we meet. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, any, is there any else, anyone else to speak from our opposition standpoint? Okay. If not, we will start the discussion. This is in District 4. Again, Commissioner Hughes is out, so I'll lead the discussion on this. <clears throat> so first, let me hear from, um, well, for, let me hear from the applicant again, if the applicant will come up. Uh, Mike Crawford with Columbia Engineering. If, if you have engineering or traffic questions, yeah, that's why. I, I have a few. Yeah. So sure. let's. Um, okay. Let's kind of start with. There's been a number of things. I know there's a. This has been in front of us for a while as well, and the concerns continue to be uh, traffic drainage buffers, right? Mm -hmm. And so let's kind of talk through some of these. Uh, first, let's talk about. Um, the new site plan that was submitted. And so what we did review that and we do have that. And uh, where the retention pond was included on as well as some of the other things we asked for from, from the last hearing. So I do appreciate the, the changes and the work that went into it. But talk to me about um, the location of the retention pond as well as some of the buffering and, and landscape as proposed on the new site plan. Sure, yeah, um, first off, the. The site plan was, re the, the building was never really intended to be as big was, as was initially proposed. So that's why that amendment was made. And in, in conjunction with that, we reduced the parking lot size. And that was also a reflection of what we expect the use will be. And so in terms of the pond, we uh, had our drainage engineers do an analysis of it. Um, and they calculated what the, what the potential detention area would be and what the size of the pond would need to be required. We uh, acquired some to topographic information and that's why the pond is sized how it is and located where it is. That'll, that'll hold the water uh, according to your development regulations. One other thing that came up is after the last meeting, there was a identification of a state water um, up on the north end of the site. And because of that, we can't really push it a whole lot to the north of the building, so that's why it uh, is is located where it's located because we can't really we can't get into that because of the buffer required. Um, we did hear some, some we did hear comments relative to the to the uh, buffering, and so we identified those on the site plan. We made sure it was better better called out. It's pretty densely wooded now, and so the the idea would be to uh, leave that existing vegetation and use that as a screen, and then. It's old. So let me, I'm sorry to interrupt. Yeah, what we have, what we have on the screen now, this, this is not the new site plan that was submitted, oh, yeah. so. Okay, then you can continue. I just didn't want that to be. Oh, okay, and, and in terms of the, um, the, the, the traffic um, and, and lighting issues, lighting will of course be directional, it'll be LED, it'll be screened in a way that it'll be pointed just to the parking lot. Um, lighting won't even be used that often because this church typically will operate on Sunday mornings. It doesn't have a whole lot of other things going on during the week. 
um, relative to, to traffic, this is a, a very, very low intensity uh, site plan. It, it, it generates very little traffic. And, and it is true that, that we compared it, I compared it previously to 46 homes because I thought, I saw in the previous package that was a, a zoning that was in place before. And so in terms of keeping it residential, it, this, this site will generate much less traffic than a residential site would generate. Um, and that site would, would operate, you know, residential would operate all during the week. This is generally going to be Sunday mornings. Um, we think there is enough buffering vegetation on the site currently to screen um, to, to screen the neighbors and uh, from from impacts, especially related to lighting. And, and again, during the uh, plan review process, the county staff will review that and, uh, and assure that the design is done in accordance with that. Yeah, that's the current plan. Um, and in terms of the waiver. Um, the site is very, very close. It, 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 honestly, it's plus or minus just a little one way or the other in terms of requiring the left turn and the right turn lane into the site. We did prepare a waiver. We submitted that on Friday. The DOT uh, responded extremely quickly in reviewing it and gave us more comments yesterday. We haven't had a chance to revise anything or update anything, but that's going to be it, it, it's going to be right on the line. Um, our thinking relative to the waiver for the left turn and the right turn lane is, again, it operates at the lowest traffic time of the week, which is Sunday morning. A um, off-duty law, law enforcement officer could probably, could very easily direct traffic in and out of here if it were an issue. Um, and so we think that that would be an appropriate mitigation strategy relative to the, to the left and right turn lanes, but that is why we requested the waiver. So. Uh, I, I know you only asked me you about did, one thing. You, did, you just ran through every oh, uh, sorry, a lot. Yeah. But that sorry. was good. Um, but I got some directed questions sure, based sure. on what you yep. just said. So let's go back. You, you, you brought up usage, so I want to talk about usage for a second. Mm -hmm. um, usage on Sunday, we understand the church. Talk to me about other usage, hours. How does the week look, a typical week? Can you walk me through that from a usage perspective? Um, I, I probably have to let the applicant talk more about that, but it's my let's, understanding. Let's, let's get her up because yeah. I want to make sure we get that addressed and answered. Yeah, it's, it's my understanding. They don't really do a whole lot else during the week. Sunday is their day. It's a small church, and, uh, and Sunday, is their, Sunday morning is their activity time. Yeah, so basically this is about uh, the activity time for the you're asking about a service, hour of service. Not, not just on Sunday, I'm asking hours for a typical week. What does a week of this building's usage look like? What is that on Sunday? Is there Wednesday services? Are there other uh, usage Sunday, during the Sunday week? Services, Sunday Only services. Sunday? Uh, I, I think uh, mostly 10 hours. I mean, hey, when people come to church, when the, when they start at 8 o'clock, 9 o'clock, you know, they have multiple services and basically some type of gathering, and that's almost 10 hours. Right, so, and that's on Sunday. Are there other days of the week that this space would be utilized? Uh, we, I don't have details on other days, okay. but mostly that will be Sunday, okay. related to Sunday services. Got it. Thank you. Mm -hmm. um, let's also talk about. But that uh, will be probably one or two hour on other days. Mm -hmm. No more. Um, <clears throat> the opposition brought up um, the ordinance in the county that allows churches to have an accessory school. Can you talk to me about any plans or they future plans for plan. a school? The applicant doesn't have any plan to go with any type of okay. school. Okay. Will provide that type of service within regular church service, worship okay. service. Thank you. The um, your new site plan, and again, I do appreciate the work on the new site plan because uh, it's different than what we have seen in the past. But you do call out the uh, monument signage. Can you talk to me about the monument signage? Uh, as monument signage, as I said, that will be a combination uh, of uh, wood, brick, and wood. Uh, and uh, there's no uh, there's no any uh, uh, 
electrical non electric it will like just that. be a nothing stationary that will be accompanied with okay uh, <clears throat> in terms of the landscaping we just heard from your uh, engineer that there's existing vegetation and existing landscaping to provide necessary buffers are there any plan is there a landscape plan and are there plans to do additional planting on the property to achieve what you have on the yeah. site plan so basically this is a, a stipulation letter that mm -hmm. i got from my client this morning so basically uh this is uh my client's statement uh, we have elected to use natural buffer oh oh sorry <laughs> Thank you. Uh, can I, can so, I, before you read it, can, have you, um, did y'all submit that stipulation letter already or you just got it? I this got her signature this morning. But we haven't seen it, correct? I'm just trying to make sure. Is it a new uh, but stipulation? I can give you this copy if you want. Okay. No, go ahead and read it. I just wanted to make sure if, it, yes. if we had it or not. Go ahead and read it, then we'll pass it around. Okay. Nope. Go ahead and read it. Oh, okay. Nope. Reading it to the mic. <laughs> Read it into the record first. Oh, okay. To the okay. 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 No problem. Yeah. So basically, uh, 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 this is a statement that my applicant uh, uh, have elected uh, to use natural buffers around the property and uh, the church uh, uh, and. Church members, church board agreed that we'll continue to maintain such landscape buffer on the site. Uh, they have noted that natural buffers, uh, the natural buffers, and will maintain such buffers in accordance with the site plan submitted to Cobb County. A part of this buffer setback, we plan to maintain existing vegetation as the actual buffer and will not plant other vegetation to set our buffer. We agree to maintain said landscape buffers with a 20 foot setback that will be consistent and compliant with the site plan during and after completion on the development of Aguas Vivas Church. Okay, thank you. And you can just pass that. We'll, we'll take a look at it, but it also needs to be formally submitted mm -hmm. so that so we can make that part of the record. Mm -hmm. um, but what I heard from that step plan is that the existing vegetation, existing landscape is it. There will be no plans for no further. Okay. That's correct. Got that. Okay. That's correct. Um, the, I think I'm. I think that's all the questions I have for you right now. Because I have some other questions for others. But let me turn to my fellow questioners and see if there are questions for the applicant at this time, before I call DOT up. You have questions, applicant. Uh, Commissioner Anderson. Um, and can you, can you tell me, so on a typical Sunday service, how, what's kind of the largest service in terms of the number of people? Number of people? Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, so basically, uh, the capacity is 246 seats. So we can, uh, uh, basically, on some Sundays, we'll probably have, the church will be full. We'll have uh, 246 people in. On some Sundays, we won't have. We'll have less people in the church. So basically, right. Okay. So um, just asking because the where would you accommodate overflow parking? Assuming it, I, I don't know how many people come. Typically, I know there's obviously code stipulated requirements based on kind of number of seats in the hall, but uh, is there any kind of data that you have from existing operations as to how many people do show up? What I was going to say is currently the, um, the demographics of this church are that they, they have high auto occupancies. This is generally families that come yep. at one time. So with the 246 seats, we expect that even at capacity, that's going to be probably 60 vehicles. Okay. Um, now that's less than what the the traffic study says, but that's what we think is going to happen because it's um, that that's kind of the nature of the way this operates now. And then additionally, there's staff and there are other people that people don't all show up at the same time. People don't leave at the same time, so. The traffic will be spread a little bit over time before and after service as well. So it's not like everybody shows up at once and everybody leaves at yep. once. Okay. 
and just one comment on that. I saw in the email from the, we had the I guess we had comments from DOT, which we'll talk about, or about about the waiver, which was I think the assumptions were rejected. So um, obviously we'll speak to DOT. Okay. Okay, but um, I don't know if there's anything ahead of that that you had any thoughts initially that we could prior to pairing DOT that would address and, uh, some of the assumption kind of. No, commentary. I think, no, I, I, no the information they provided was good information. The comments that they provided were, were good comments. And like I said, I think I think it's it's going to be right on the line as, as it requires the lanes or it doesn't require the lanes. Um, it, it's, it, I think, also an off-duty law enforcement officer would probably direct traffic. You're, you're talking about 30 left ter turns in to one every other minute at a time of the day when it's when it's low traffic volume anyways. Right turns are about the same 30 cars coming in. That's extremely low for for uh, for a lane use development. So I think that I think those lanes probably are not required. However, if the county requires them, the county will require require them. Okay, great. Thank you. Sure. Okay, any other questions? Y'all can have a seat. I'm going to call up uh, DLT. You can have a seat. Thank you. Michael Francis, DOT. Thank you. Can we, uh, so we, <clears throat> well first let me, let me just state something. <laughs> so a lot of what we've seen on this case has been uh, via email traffic over the last couple of days. Um, and so we know that uh, the waiver was submitted and then I saw some email traffic, but can you kind of walk us through DOT's comments and thoughts on the, on the uh, left turn lane waiver that was submitted by the applicant? Okay. So yeah, we received the waiver and uh, completed our review. Um, our concerns is that the waiver, um, it did not include um, growth rates for the volumes. Um, so we were asking that they apply a growth rate. I think the volumes were um, taken from 2019. And so with the growth rate, we will um, have higher volumes, of course. Uh, the other concern is that um, the peak hour factor that they showed in the um, study was for 8, 8 a.m., but um, they also had a table that showed the peak actually been at 11. So we wanted them to confirm the actual um, times of the services and how many services that they're planning to have on Sunday. Thank you. Uh, if from my fellow commissioners, any other questions for DOT? No, thank you. All right, <clears throat> um, again, filling in for Commissioner Hughes from District 4, we had some discussion about this, and then, of course, we start getting the emails, and so we, we, we kind of went back and forth as early as today um, in terms of some, some of this. Where uh, I'm, I'm prepared to, 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 make a, to make a motion, um, if, but I want to make sure I uh, am not jumping the gun for my fellow commissioner if there are other questions that you'd like to ask of other staff. Uh, Commissioner Anderson. The only question I would have is of, of, of Jeannie and, and the um, planning staff. Just I think the recommendation, obviously we've had a lot of different data points come in, but initially it was for an approval. And given in light of all the information that's come in, just wanted to see if there were any kind of <laughs> high level thoughts as to, hey, this was a condition that was a real sticking point some of the information that's come in since then has helped seem, would theoretically resolve that. So just wanted to see if there's any updated stance on that. And, and if not, that's fine too. I know there's a lot of information that's come in um, in short order, but if there were initially thoughts on that. I think the zoning division stands by the approval status um, and we see all subsequent communication as the applicant attempting to answer questions. Um, and there is, there is a lot of back and forth on this one. However, I think it's all to the end of um, making more clear their, their status. Thank you. Okay. No further questions. I'm, I'm prepared to make a motion. Uh, one, I do appreciate the work that the, the applicant is doing to try to get answers to questions and working with staff. Uh, there are a lot of issues around this particular case, but there are also um, I think there's some things that could be mitigated, and, and I do appreciate the, the work that's going into it. 
in light of the new information, the new STIP letter, the waiver, um, the request for growth volumes, um, still some questions for me that I don't know if I feel comfortable uh, with the answers today around uh, peak hour factors and number of services, time of services, uh, number of congregants that are going to be uh, attending each service, uh, Sunday usage, other days of the week usage. I just feel that um, we need further information. So my motion is to hold um, this for um, another 30 days and allowing the applicant to uh, continue to answer the questions, but to also, I would strongly suggest, get a lot, let's move a lot of the discussion off from email and let's get some things submitted into the record so that we can have a full picture of, uh, of what we're reviewing. So that's my motion. Um, second. I have a second from uh, Commissioner Ballon. Is there any discussion? If not, I'll call the question. Right. One no, question. go ahead, please. One quick question. Could we request that the issues brought up here just be memorialized in, a, in an updated STIP letter? Yes. And so that would just be the only Yep. Rec. So we, uh, for the applicant, making sure you uh, hear that from uh, Commissioner Anderson that we would recommend that you update the STIP letter with uh, many other issues that we've talked about here today. Uh, I got the landscape one, but just uh, update that STIP letter to include all stipulations. So it's a complete, a complete picture of, the, of, the, um, of what you're trying to do. Uh, so yeah, we will call the question. A vote of four to zero to hold um, Z9 uh, for 30 days, and we will revisit it in um, July. Thank you. And as a reminder, that July meeting is on July 5th, a Wednesday. The next case is Z11, 2023. Jose Luis Cardenas is requesting a rezoning from GC to NRC for a bakery in land lot 34 of the 18th district located on the southwest corner of the intersection of Veterans Memorial Highway and Powell Drive. Is the applicant present? Let the record show the applicant is here. Is there anyone here in opposition of case Z11? Let the record show there is one person opposed. All those that wish to address the board, please come forward to be sworn in. Hello, good morning. My name is Jose Lopez. Um, we are a bakery located in the Mableton area. Um, over the years, we have grown um, our customers and we have um, trying to expand to more people in the community. Um, we are um, having an issue with our storage space, as in um, storing our materials for the produce of the bakery, the trays, the the oil, or the um, any other things that. Um, the bakery needs and we are running um, low on space on the inside of the bakery since it's a small bakery and this is why we request to have a storage in the back of the bakery. I know that the um, Mableton Improvement Coalition has sent us an email to to um, fix a um, few little issues that we have already and we have already done those and fixed those issues and um, yeah that's what I have. Okay thank you. Mm -hmm. You can have a seat. We'll call you back up. Thank you. Uh, we'll hear from uh, opposition, uh, Mapleton Improvement Coalition. Okay. Um, uh, Steve Young again. Um, we are actually in favor of this expansion. The, the bakery is a is a valuable asset to the community and. I don't know if anybody's ever eaten there, but the food is is really good. So, we are we are enthusiastic about the expansion. We just like to see a few um, uh, improvements also added uh, uh, to 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 the uh, uh, request here. Uh, parking lot we think needs to be resealed, restriped. Uh, dumpster needs to be placed in a uh, uh, confined area um, away. Um, you know, or at least, uh, you know, blocked from from view and meet county standards. 
uh, I'll just pop to the next. The, the window in the middle has a piece of plywood in the in in, in there, and it uh, because they got a display case on the other side. Uh, we'd like it if uh, either shutters were put on the exterior or blinds were put on the interior. We'd like the building repainted to go along, uh, and and the extension to match. The, uh, the, uh, the paint and the architecture uh, of, the, of the building. The, uh, there, there was an outside, I think they may have removed it, but I'm not sure, but there was a pole that used to have a sign on it uh, on the street that needs to, needs to go. And uh, the parking really needs to be for only the customers and the, uh, the employees and delivery. Uh, also, you know, prohibited uses that we usually attach, you know, like, uh, you know, no uh, sexually explicit material. I know that's doesn't show up in a bakery, but uh, liquor stores and all the other things. Well, I like to call the usual suspects. Um, in any case, uh, we are in in favor of this expansion. We're in favor of this business. We just like to add those uh, uh, extra conditions to it. I'd like to appreciate the time. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Um, this also is in District 4. So uh, in Commissioner Hughes's absence, I'll, I'll lead the discussion. If I can have the applicant back up. <clears throat> I don't have many questions at all. My only thing, uh, you, you've received the letter from the Mapleton Improvement Coalition. Uh, are y'all in agreement with all the uh, different uh, stipulations they've requested? Yes, and for the parking lot to be released and restriped, we have done that already um, as of um, three days ago. The dumpster that to be replaced in enclosure that meets current county standards, we have done that as well. Um, for the windows that um, the gentleman was talking, we have um, contracted in um, a graphic design um, company for us to wrap the windows to um, expose our work that we do, as in like the logo, um, you know, um, the breads or the pastries that are cooked there. Um, and also the, um, for the, for also for the exterior, we have also changed the, um, the, the, the roof shingles so that it could give it a better, um, better image to the bakery. And we have also painted um, parts where the bakery had needed to be repainted and we have fixed those um, those issues for, for Thank whatever you. they were requesting, yes. Thank you. The only, my second and final question uh, has to do with the uh, the window that you talked about and the, the wrapping. Um, there was some email traffic with uh, Commissioner Sheffield talking about the, um, the window decal, yes, like your logo yes. and everything. Uh -huh. So is that what the graphic designer is working on? Yes, and I, I have a picture that I also, I can email it to you guys. Yeah. Um, the earliest that they, they're going to do is um, for, I believe it's next Monday, okay. the June 12th. That's the email that I got to where um, they're, they're going to be able to do that work for us that we couldn't get it in before the, the date that they were telling us to, to make it happen. Awesome. Yeah. Um, I, I don't have another question, but I do want to commend you, the applicant, for your work with um, Able to Improvement Coalition. This is... Um, we like to see cases like this. We like to see when applicants work with the community, and um, and so I just want to commend you for that. Okay. It's uh, it's been a, a pleasure having to fill in on this one. Uh, let me turn it over and see if there any of my other commissioners have any questions for the applicant. And then if I can also show the other picture, how the bakery is looking yeah, now. Sure. And that's what its current standing. And then for the parking lot. And then this is for the trash. Yeah, thank you for providing the update. Uh, again, just from the emails we've been seeing that the work was going on, So, but these pictures are, are a great update. So thank you, thank you for providing that. Okay. But you can have a seat. Thank you. Um, with that, uh, well, let me pause and see. Uh, do any of my other commissioners have questions of any of the other staff or others they want to hear from? If not, I'm prepared to make my motion. Um, for Z11, I'd like to move that we recommend uh, approval. Um, 
to include and be inclusive of all staff uh, recommendations and and comments, as well as um, <coughs> excuse me, all fire department uh, comments, water and sewer comments and recommendations, stormwater comments and recommendations, DOT comments and recommendations, and to reflect the uh, Mableton Improvement Coalition submitted a uh, step letter from April 26, 2023, as well as the recommended window decal treatment um, as recommended by the uh, district commissioner. And that would be my motion. Second. I have a second from Commissioner Belong. Any discussion? If not, I'll call the question. So uh, by vote of four to zero, we recommend approval of Z11. Thank you. Our next case is special land use permit SLUP4 of 2023, Ray Murphy, requesting a special land use permit renewal for an automobile storage yard and wrecker service for damaged or confiscated vehicles in land lots 154 and 155 of the 17th district. Located on the northwest side of Austell Road at the terminus of Austell Circle. Is the applicant present? Let the record show the applicant is here. Is there any one in opposition to SLUP4? Let the record show there are no people opposed here today. All those who wish to address the board, please come forward to be sworn in. Vicki Murphy Norris, and I'm representing my dad, Ray Murphy, with Slut 4, 2023. Last meeting, we were advised to have landscape plan with a architect. I did that. However, with this plan, there's one for everyone. With this plan, I've been advised to implement this is going to be between thirty and forty thousand dollars that does not include the irrigation system that needs to go around with it i feel like this process has really um, evolved a lot with that being said i do intend on improving the property and utilizing whatever information you guys will give me to implement these things and not cost basically 30 to 40 for landscape and 20,000 for fencing. Um, the privacy fence, yes, it's, it's hideous. It needs to be replaced. We had planned on replacing it two or three months ago. The materials for half of it are already on the lot. We were told not to proceed waiting on uh, this approval. Um, so I did not submit this plan to you guys because I did not want to submit a plan that I cannot commit to with the money involved. Um, you know, I'd like all of your suggestions, recommendations, what what you would like to see me do, but I, I cannot commit to this particular plan. I can try to get another plan, but again, that cost me, you know, $3,800 just for that. Um, we had a issue last time with our parking plan being implemented. 
um, the first parking plan was approved, but then it wasn't approved. And so we have a new parking plan now, and it is being implemented. Everything's 20 foot off of the fence or the property line pulled in towards the lot. And as we pull it in towards the center of the lot, we are actually losing 24.2% of our property to utilize for our business because of bringing that buffer in 20 foot all the way around. Um, again, that's a little bit, uh, what, almost a fourth of the property that we can't use for business purposes, but we'd love to do the buffer. We just want to do it the right way and not spend an astronomical amount of money on it. Um, I'm just trying to bullet point what we went through last time because um, I, I know your time's valuable and I know that there's certain things that need to be done that we need to do in a timely fashion. Um, I do want to let you know one reason that Dad's not with me today, he really wanted to be here, is because he was in a very serious accident. He was transported to Grady's Trauma Center. He's doing okay now, but he would love to be here and he can't. So, um, one other thing, let me see about our minutes here and then I'll give Alberto some time if he needs to talk. Um, the hardened surface, Alberto can comment on that. Um, he has been working on that diligently. Did meet with code enforcement last, last week, yes. 31st, I believe it was. And yes, there are some things that code enforcement did point out that we needed to get off the property, such as old tires and, you know, just um, basically pinpointing different things with uh, different areas have a little trash here, different areas have a little bit of overgrown grass, needs to be weed eated. We are doing our best to keep it clean because we understand it needs to be clean. It needs to be utilized like the county wants us to utilize it and present, you know, in front of that busy Austell Road corridor, a, a, dis, a decent looking business. Um, so uh, I do have, I'm just trying to bullet point some things um, because I know you guys have got a lot of questions in regards to how I'm proceeding and how I'm, um, not getting things done in you know the the dates that you guys want me to do as far as those deadlines um if it's possible i just wanted some direction on can we look at uh, uh, revised stipulations can we look at variances can we look at waivers can we look at other business items to help us move forward to get this business where we need for it to be where we want it to be and not spend fifty or sixty thousand dollars. That's a lot of money. Um, I did attend the work session, and very concerned, or maybe I'm confused, about the stormwater management. I believe when we initially went into this application a year ago, stormwater management did not have, I don't think, all of these additional things that have to be looked at or, or abided. Now, I mean, there's a whole list of stuff there now that I don't recall being on stormwater management. But I will say that since all these improvements and different things are happening on this piece of land, I mean, we're creating problems by trying to improve this property. The stormwater runoff with partially um, gravel or loosened um, surface is slow, it slows it down. It goes down into the apartment complex in the very back. There's no problem, and that was documented before. We have no problem with stormwater management, but now we do, because we have had to implement a hardened surface, the impervious areas changing. Um, and I'm just saying from our original application to now, as far as stormwater management, it's, it's different. So it's gonna be a problem for me also, I'm assuming. And that I'm, I'm assuming from that um, the meeting, that planning meeting I went to, where the comment was made that uh, is it a detention or a retention pond would cost fifty thousand to a hundred thousand dollars. So with that, I mean, I, 
I don't want to shut this place down because it is my tenant's livelihood with him and his family. He works very hard and he's been in that business. I think he's been there since 2011 actually, or maybe 2014. He'd have to you know, give me the specifics, but I want to do what is necessary and what Cobb County wants us to do and proceed. However, I know that you have given me deadlines. You have given me certain things to accomplish. I'm do I've done my best. I just cannot afford to spend all this money, but I'm willing to make all the improvements. Uh, let's see. The uh, architect, I know I'm, I've got less time now. The architect that came out and did the drawings for me wanted me wanted me to um, understand that the county needs the plants to be six foot in height by two years. Well, if we put up the, we're gonna eight foot privacy fence that has been asked of us. If we put up an eight foot privacy fence, yes, the plantings will grow, but it takes them two years just to get to six foot when we're already gonna have a eight foot privacy fence. So we are actually spending money on something that maybe we can uh, um, s substitute something for as far as all of the plantings. And um, I'm sure I forgot some stuff. Um, actually, I did want to say, I, do, I don't want to, I, w I don't want this to be a tit for tat with code enforcement. I do not want to be um, worried, so to say, that code enforcement is just coming to, to pick and choose or or whatnot. We are in process of cleaning the property. Um, Alberto does have some pictures if you want to see what he has done for improvements. And um, like I said, I, I want to work with code enforcement. And um, I was actually told about um, a right of way that we had a discussion about on the 30th with um, code enforcement. I didn't realize the right of way it was supposed to be mine per code enforcement. It is not my right of way. It's a ditch full of trash and is the state right of way. I verified it yesterday with an architect. I was told ignorance was not my excuse for not knowing that the ditch was needing to be cleaned out by code enforcement. You're at time, but I know we'll have questions for you. So hang tight. I'm gonna turn over to, um, <clears throat> Commissioner Ballon, for your uh, district to lead our discussion on this. Thank you, Mr. Chair. And uh, let, let me turn to county staff. Uh, who, who, who on county staff has this case principally? I believe it was mine. It's your case? Okay. So if, if I'm understanding the applicant correctly, the applicant's essentially saying that the The, bird, the, 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 the burdens and the expenses of, of uh, complying uh, with the directives of the, of the board um, are, are severe uh, due in part to the fact that having to <clears throat> harden the surface uh, where, where all the cars are to be kept in the parking plan will result in creating a runoff problem, which in turn creates a stormwater problem. That's, that's what I'm hearing, right? So um, it, it, it just seems to me that rather than have us go through this process of approving a landscaping plan uh, and um, seeing to it they get proper fencing done, if, we're, if the, in the end we're gonna say, no, you can't have your, you can't have anything going on here. Uh, you, can't, you can't maintain this use. Um, it, it just seems to me that it might be more appropriate for if there's a vehicle for us to move this to the Board of Commissioners for them to consider whether or not to relax their uh, <clears throat> uh, relax their requirement regarding the, the hardened surface because if not then I, based upon what I'm hearing this isn't going to happen so um, yes I mean I think you're recognizing the the approvals that were given in the previous um, special land use approval um, had comments from stormwater 
discussing the square footage requirements um, that would trigger stormwater comments. Mm -hmm. And um, I believe it was, a, yes, it was approved to those stormwater comments. So where the parking lot hardening, once it exceeds the 5,000 square foot threshold, I believe is what stormwater has, um, they will be subject to mitigation efforts um, through stormwater. So there, there is an opportunity to investigate whether um, you know there are creative solutions to this issue, but you've defined it very well. I mean, the comments are playing against the cost effectiveness of trying to move forward for so the applicant. I have you there and I have the county attorney there and I have a former county attorney up here. So <laughs> I got a lot of help but coming to me here. But uh, it, it just seems to me that the, the board of commissioners speaks for the county and they, they, they've made a decision that there are certain objectives they want met and fulfilled as a condition to allowing this business to continue here. So I'm, I'm very reluctant and remiss to make any recommendation contrary to what the board of commissioners has said. Um, can you recommend a vehicle for us to, for me to make a motion just to move this back up there for them to have a chance to revisit whether or not it's absolutely essential that all these cars be on a hardened surface? Because if the answer is yes, that that surface has to be hardened, what, it, what I'm hearing from the applicant is they can't afford the storm the the ensuing stormwater changes, uh, and, and 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 it's not worth proceeding. So I. I I mean, I suppose I could just recommend that this go up as a denial with, with, a, with a note for them to consider. Is, is, do you have a better idea for me? A recommendation can contain additional recommendation perhaps to, to, to address the, the application itself. Um, the, this, the Planning Commission can actually have a no recommendation if it chooses to move it up. Um, so there is opportunity in a, in a motion and a recommendation to request a revisit or review of certain items as to this specific parcel, since this parcel is subject to the, the application itself, to the slip application. I mean. Okay, well, I'll just open the floor to receive comments then from my fellow members of this planning commission before making a motion uh, yeah i recognize commissioner dan um question so you're 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 focused primarily on that cause and effect piece i mean is there an option to ask the board for advisory direction on that specific question and then also hear what else has been done and then package it together uh, if he hard uh, Brian do you have thoughts on that I apologize if the question could be is, is, is there a way for us to uh, just throw an advisory question or, or throw a point to to the Board of Commissioners and uh, rather than a no recommendation per se I think that would be unique sir I mean the, these applications can be moved up without a, a formal recommendation from this, uh, the Flint and Planning Commission, um, and maybe some, a clerk's note as to, to request from the board for direction or an explanation or a review of something specific. I mean, only the board can make those determinations and those directions, but Correct. this being an appointed body of the Board of Commissioners can certainly ask for request or request advice from the board or direction if if a matter is so complicated or is is needing some direction that only they can provide okay um, well, let me just pose one more question to you it came to my attention during the last 30 days that uh, there was an issue where somebody was actually performing auto repairs on this property do you have any comment on that i do not believe there are auto repairs on that property we can ask the tenant, however, the items that are stored there are considered incidental storage. We're not stripping down cars and we're not repairing cars. Mm -hmm. If a car needs a battery in it to crank it up and move it, we may put a battery in it. 
other other than that, the cars are not being stripped down or repaired okay. per se. Okay. I mean, we wouldn't repair someone else's vehicle. We're not supposed to touch them, as far as the you know the in, the contents and things. Even the things that are in the back of a pickup truck, it's not our property. We have to document every bit of that and not touch it. Okay. So would you like to ask the tenant um, for details on it? I'm no, okay. no, no, thank you. I'm, I'm fine with that. You, you can have a seat, I think. <laughs> All right. So uh, my motion will be that we pass this matter back to the Board of Commissioners without, uh, without a specific recommendation and uh, that the that that motion go with a note uh, at least for me if not from this group uh, that based on the comments of the uh, applicant uh, as to being unable to fulfill the cost we would i feel like i would be constrained to recommend a denial um, however that the board of commissioners may wish to consider uh, whether it, it's worth it to preserve this business, to obtain landscaping, to obtain new fencing, but to relax the requirement for a, for a hardened surface, uh, given the fact that in the past we've allowed uh, gravel to sometimes serve as a, as a parking surface. So it, basically, unless they wish to reconsider that decision, that this would stand as a denial. If, if you'd like to counsel me on making a better motion I'd be willing to entertain it I believe your motion is to the uh, to make a motion of no recommendation to to move up to the board of commissioners uh, with a clerk's note as to to what you had specified about the, the the parking and the gravel versus hardened surface that the absent that relief that that in your words that you would think it would be a denial but you're not willing to make that motion so the motion is no recommendation right that's my that's my motion based upon the fact that basically uh, I, I think to just based upon the applicant's comments that that uh, that that would terminate effectively terminate this use of the property this business so um, it, it's something that I think is appropriate only for them to really consider whether they can relax that one requirement and otherwise allow for these improvements to be made per a land, per this plan. Um, Commissioner Boulogne, so one, one thing I'd ask if we're, just to add as a comment to, as we ask the BOC for advice, I think it would be also helpful to get guidance around the timing or the phasing of each of those recommendations. The only reason I ask is because, just honestly, some of them seem to be a bit impossible to achieve um, all at once. Um, creating a new parking configuration while meeting paving requirements, while marrying that with, <clears throat> excuse me, buffering. That would be the only thing that I would ask if there was any prioritization around the timing of those or any guidance on that. Because some of them doing simultaneously seem to me to be a little bit in conflict. So we have a motion on the table. We don't have a second. Uh, well, I appreciate the comment. We probably need to move to discussion if we're going to have that. But um, I will entertain a second on the motion on the table. I'll second. Do we have a second from Commissioner Anderson? Uh, I'll open for discussion. Do I need to repeat the comments? I hope not. All right. Not <laughs> I will not repeat the comments. <laughs> But let's, uh, is there is there follow up to, well, to the comment? I think the point's well taken, and that there should simply be a, a second note that the board of commissioners may wish to provide some parameters on on prioritizing what happens first. I would think, given the uh, um, importance of the appearance from Austell Road, those things that, are, that can be seen from Austell Road should be prioritized. But. Uh, you know, but the whole the whole thing would be moot if they decide that there has to be a hardened surface throughout here be, uh, that they can't use gravel because then they can't afford it. So it would just be a denial. I, I agree with the discussion on that. Um, I don't. <clears throat> 
I don't think it's the purpose of, <laughs> of this body or the board to create undue hardships, but uh, I do think it's a question that is worthy of, of, of raising up and, and let's see what, what comes down from that. So if there's no further discussion, I'll call the question. I, I have a question. Oh. It's, you're calling the question on his amended, but I don't know if his amendment amend. was second. Was he adding a, a clerk's note? I'm just figuring out what we're voting on. I'm sorry, yes, I, I, I was adding a second note. And I, I, I suppose there should be technically a second on my, my amended motion, correct? So I, I would second that. Okay. Y'all really testing my Robert's rule of order today, but um, okay. So we have a second, <laughs> no discussion on that. Now we will call the new question on the amended motion. By vote of four to zero, um, we are recommending uh, no, no, uh, no, no recommendation up back to the Board of Commissioners with a clerk's note. All right, thank you. Okay, our next case has um, is case Z17, which was brought forward from consent, and it has a companion case, special land use um, permit five. Would you like to hear those um, together? Yes, we'll hear those together. All right, I will read those into the record. Um, Z17 Caliber Capital Kennesaw LLC is requesting a rezoning from GC to OMR for a hotel in Landlot 651 of the 16th District, located on the west side of Roberts Court and on the east side of the I-75 exit ramp south of Ernest Barrett Parkway. Um, additionally, SLUP5 Caliber Capital Kennesaw LLC is requesting a special land use permit for a hotel in Landlot 651 of the 16th District, located on the west side of Roberts Court and on the east side of the I-75 exit ramp south of Ernest Barrett Parkway. Um, is the applicant present? Let the record show the applicant is present. Is there anyone here in opposition of Z-17 or SLUP-5? Let the record show there is no one in opposition. We can proceed. Good morning. I had to look and see what it was afternoon yet. I knew we were getting close. Uh, for the record, my name is Park Suff, law firm of Sam's Larkin and Huff, and I represent the applicant in regards to this uh, rezoning and special land use permit application before you this, this morning. I also want to comment, uh, Ms. Payton had said that she was going to do a better job than Mr. Peterson. I didn't believe she would, but I think, <laughs> I think she's doing a, a better job than, than Mr. Peterson, and, and hope he just stays on vacation for a long time. <laughs> Hope he's listening. <laughs> um, this is a, a, a uh, rezoning and a, a slump for a hotel in the regional activity center, the town center regional activity center. It's on Roberts Court. And I um, want to just briefly uh, explain a little bit about what's going on with Roberts Court. If we can zoom out a little bit on the, on the aerial there on the GIS. So Roberts Court uh, starts at Barrett Parkway, um, at Busby Parkway, and goes south to the Home Depot. Uh, go out one more click. And it goes out. You see the Home Depot to the south. Uh, and right now, Roberts Court ends at the Home Depot. Uh, but um, DOT is currently building a bridge over 75 that will connect over uh, to that cul-de-sac at the end, other end of 75. Uh, no, go a little further. Yeah, right there. Yeah, you're right. Um, that is going to be a flyover bridge. And so you're going to have uh, Barrett Parkway, it's what called the Barrett Parkway Reliever, is going to be uh, going all the way from Greer's Chapel at 41, weaving through behind uh, the Costco, behind Dick's Sporting Goods, 
goes over the interstate with a new bridge uh, that's under development right now, and then there's going to be a cul-de-sac at the end of Roberts Court uh, where Home Depot currently sits. So right now, Roberts Court is a dead-end street. In the near future, it will be an important arterial connection uh, that will allow people to get all the way from 41 Marietta area to Town Center Mall without ever getting on Barrett Parkway, which is one of the goals of all of our lives that ever go to Town Center is how do you avoid Barrett Parkway? So this will allow that to happen. It's a significant road project. And it's worthy to note because this is part of the long-term vision of the Town Center CID to increase uh, transportation opportunities in the area. And now you can see how our property fits into the, in context with all this. Uh, it is at the interstate interchange. Uh, it's sandwiched between Roberts Court and the, and the exit ramp of, of 75. Uh, to our north, if we can zoom back into our side a little bit more, uh, just so you can see what's there. So to our north is a convenience store uh, right at the, at the signalized intersection. To the south is another, ho is another hotel. Uh, this is a combination of two parcels that will be combined together into one parcel. Uh, and it will be, proposal is a uh, seven-story uh, element hotel, suite hotel, a higher-end uh, product that is not av currently available in the town center CID area. Uh, and so we, one of the first stops we made was going and talking to the town center CID, and they were excited about the prospect of this coming forward. Uh, <coughs> I've spent a lot of time talking about the location and how it fits in because I, I know Mr. Beloin has some questions and concerns about some of the variances. Uh, and I, I emphasize that this is in the middle of the regional activity center. It's on, an arti on a uh, transportation corridor that ties all this together. And so this is where you utilize a parcel that's, that's constrained by north, south, east, and west by roads and by other uses. So you've got a defined parcel. So yes, it's less than, than the two acres, but right now it's got a, a car rental business and a closed little retail building. So uh, being able to make it an active use is important. And, and a regional activity center is not an area where you actually reduce the density or intensity. You actually want to get things as utilized and it, intensively utilized because that's how a regional activity center functions. Uh, so what we've got proposed is, a, uh, in, in my, I've submitted a, uh, a um, statement of intent that goes through the details of what we're proposing, but it's, it's a um, element hotel uh, with 128 room, rooms on it, um, seven stories. Uh, we've, uh, DOT had commented that we need FAA studies. Those studies have come back and the, the height should, is okay based upon the FAA studies. Obviously, we'll be confirming all that as we go through plan review. Uh, and then if we can, I don't know if the, um, the site plan on the staff analysis. Yeah. Yeah, that's it. Super. So there's the site plan. And so a couple things I want to point out about the site planning. Again, it relates to the size of the property. Um, we have a shared access point to the north. So our access point on Roberts Court, Court is actually uh, shared with the convenience store, and that R is an existing curb cut. And to the south, we have, again, a shared access with a hotel to the south. And I bring that, that up because when you look at the size of property, when you realize that the driveway connections are on adjacent or shared with adjacent properties, that actually makes our property a little bit bigger in, in how it functions. So we, we show a hotel uh, closer to Roberts Court with some you know, parking between us and, and Roberts Court. And then behind it's gonna be the main parking that will be for it. Uh, this is a, L, uh, a Western Element Hotel uh, that is designed for the business travels, traveler. So it does have a suite element to it because it's designed for people who might be in town for uh, different uh, training uh, and different events and things like that. Uh, so it is consistent with what the regional activity center is looking for having coming in the area. The staff uh, had recommended approval. It was on your consent agenda. 
Um, there was no one here uh, from the public in, in opposition. We simply ask that you follow your staff recommendation for approval. Uh, they have uh, eight conditions. We're agreeable to all those eight conditions being a part of the zoning uh, approval. Uh, and it should be a fairly straightforward case. case. I understand Mr. Bloin's concern about the, the, some of the variances, but I think given the fact that this is in a regional activity center, uh, given the fact that the use is something that's needed in the area, and um, it, it's a good use for this property, it's a good intensity for this property, it's what this area needs. It's the reason why, again, the, the, um, our discussions with the uh, town center CID have all been positive. We look forward to your recommendation of this to the Board of Commissioners. Um, and I hope I've addressed, Mr. Bloin, your some of your questions and concerns, if, if, even if I've not totally resolved them, but I'll be glad to answer specific ones. All right, thank you. This is in uh, Commissioner Bloin's district, so I'll turn it over to you. Huh? Oh, is it not? It's in the kind of in a... It's in a... Right. <coughs> I'm looking at so, Barry Parkway, but no, it's, it's clear. We will um, turn it over to Commissioner Dan. Well, I, I do think it is kind of a gray area. So um, since um, my fellow commissioner brought it up, I'm going to let him lead the discussion. Thank you very much. Uh, if I could just get Carl Carver to come up. Carl Carver, Cobb County Stormwater. Thanks. So, so my concern was here was triggered by, by one thing, really, and that was that I saw that the current um, impervious area here was 70% on this lot. Okay. That's what, what the staff comments said. And that there's uh, a request here to increase impervious to 90%. Uh, so uh, given that, um, what what is going to be done in mitigation to prevent uh, an adverse impact on Noonday Creek? Um, when a project like this comes in for redevelopment, if they're disturbing, which they will be, more than 10,000 square feet, we require them to provide stormwater management that considers the property as wooded. So that is their baseline. That uh, determines their baseline flows that they can exceed in their post-development condition. So they will have to provide stormwater detention, water quality, and runoff reduction not to exceed that baseline flow. So it that requirement that we have uh, keeps the, makes it simulate like it's a wooded site. So the increased impervious area is handled through their stormwater management system. As a practical matter, what's that gonna mean? Because I don't see detention, I may have missed something, but I don't see any stormwater detention on the plan. Um, yeah, it's not required at this zoning stage, but most likely on something this um, dense that they would probably do something underneath the parking deck or in the parking lot, uh, and they may use some pervious pavers also to offset some of that. Okay. So there's a lot of different options they could do, be yeah. very similar to some of the Braves development, there's large parking vaults, um, stormwater vaults underneath parking decks. Right, right. They actually put stormwater vaults in. Right. That, that, that's what I'm wondering. What That could be done here, or they could do something within the parking lot. But but something will be done. I yes. mean, it, it, this is a matter where they can just go out and get some engineer to give a letter, which is, uh, to me, objectively false, uh, that says that their development's not going to no, our code, our code actually says if you remove and replace, create new impervious surface over 5,000 square feet, that you have to provide stormwater management to the current regulations. Okay. And, and this does meet that requirement then? The, the, yeah, they're, they're going to wipe the site clean. Okay. So that's being, that requirement's being triggered, right? Right. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Uh, any of the other commissioners have a question to staff or okay if not I will turn it back to Commissioner Dan right. 
Are we handling these jointly or? We are. Okay. So I would move for approval of C-17 and SLEP-5. Also on the consent agenda. We need to do it there needs to be There needs to be two motions. Yeah. Okay, I will move for approval of Z-17, not to be on the consent agenda. Not to be on. Right. Okay. I have a, a, a motion. I'll entertain a second. <laughs> second. Oh, sorry. With, uh, are there stipulations associated Just with it? All staff comments and recommendations. Yes. Yeah. All staff comments and recommendations. Second. We have a second. Uh, is there any discussion? We'll call the question. So, somebody had, okay, so by a vote of four to zero, we recommend uh, approval of Z17. And now I'll take a motion for slip five. I move to approve SLEP 5 also subject to all staff comments and recommendations. Second. We have a second by Commissioner Anderson. Um, if no discussion, let's call the question. Okay, again, by a vote of four to zero, we recommend approval of SLEP 5. If I can have a point of clarification, can it go back on consent at the BOC level? Is that with it being unanimous here? It was not recommended to go, so I, I think it will be on the regular agenda for. Okay, I'm just, just wondering if it could be. Okay. We'll move to the next case. Thank you. Our next case is land use permit 11. Rick Coleman, who is requesting a temporary land use permit renewal to allow firewood storage in land lot 874 of the 17th district, located on the east side of Leland Drive, north of Wendy Hill Road. Is the applicant present? Let the record show the applicant is present. Is there anyone here in opposition of LUP 11? Let the record show there is no one in opposition. All those that wish to address the board, please come forward to be sworn in. Good morning. First, I'd like to say um, I love it that y'all are going to allow that hotel in there. My, we have a chiropractic office right by the Home Depot, so that's going to be anything nice there is fantastic. So I appreciate that. Um, I'd like to start by saying thank you for having me back. I think it was a year ago I was here. Mr. Chairman, uh, can you ask him to have his name for the record? Offered? Oh, I'm sorry, Rick Coleman. I apologize. Uh, over a year ago I was here. If you remember, I um, started a little firewood business with my boys, you remember, um, to teach them about work ethic and being outdoors and keep them off of video games, keep them off of YouTube, um, and we've been very successful. I have two hardworking young men. Um, we uh, donate a lot of our firewood to Cobb County contractors, such as David Baggett and all of that crew. Actually, they rent half of our building at 1885 Leland. So a lot of the contractors are there and get firewood from us. Um, we also um, donate our firewood to the apartments right next door, the city of Sandy Springs, and then also um, many of the homeless people that you see in downtown of Atlanta that have fires, they're uh, in the winter season, they're actually getting their firewood from us. So we donate to them. So this all started back when um, we had some logs that were delivered and they were dropped on the right of way. Gosh, I wish we could go back to that day, um, but um, it is what it is. And I got a violation um, 
to get my um, wood moved off of the property, or not off the property, but off of the right of way. Um, we did that, of course, right away. Um, Officer Foster was great with me, working with me, has always been, so your officers are fantastic for Cobb County. We applied for a special land use permit, and we were given one year. Um, basically, in a nutshell, to figure out how to move our wood. Well, um, again, uh, I would like to show you, let me find the original picture. It used to look like this, you mind doing that? Um, on our property, if you drove by, I don't know how many of you know Leland Drive, but it's kind of a, I hate to use the word, seedy area, um, if that's a proper term, but um, with the couple hotels and different things back there. It's not, not the best, but I think they're trying to fix it up. They're doing something on the corner. So they told me to put up a fence, and we had changed it. Now if you drive by, you see a nice fence um, on both sides of our building. Here's another one. And then also, um, that fence cost us uh, almost $12,000 to put the fence up, which for just a small business or a small little, uh, I guess you would call it like a, um, there's one receipt of, of 6,000 and then if you'll put the other receipt on there of 5,800 to get the fence up. Um, so we did all that per the board's request to make it look nicer. Um, well, I try to teach my boys, let me go back to my list so I don't miss anything. Um, sorry, I lost my page, I apologize. Um, I'll have to wing it if I don't remember. So I, I try to teach my boys um, not to offer excuses. Um, the great George Washington once said that you're better off not offering an excuse, um, or not offering a bad excuse, but offering no excuse at all. But I will say, um, if I have to offer an excuse, I have a couple. Um, one is, um, over the last year, the weather was unseasonably warm, so we were not able to move all of the firewood off of that location. Um, also, the $12,000 for the fence really put hurt on us um, financially for my firewood side business, basically. Um, so we were not able to find an alternative. Um, we are working with community development to try to find an alternative. Basically, in a nutshell, the, the building is zoned office and we have a chiropractic office there. Um, but we added the firewood for, you know, whatever you want to say, for uh, the money goes into my boy's 529 account, it's developing honor, you know, look men and, the, look men and women in the eye and deliver, and um, school kids go with us now. Um, and so it's been a, a, a great thing for my boys. We would like to continue it, but our goal, obviously, is we can't have it there, and I don't think it's possible to have a building zoned both, office and whatever the zoning is that we need to store firewood there. So basically, we have to move our firewood business. So I am requesting that you give us a two-year extension. One is that this coming year, we are able to get rid of more wood, um, develop some equity, and then start looking for a property. Like I said, I'm going to work with community development to try to find a properly zoned um, uh, 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 space or property where we can move our firewood business to, um, or our firewood storage to. Um, I, I don't know if we've had any complaints over the last year, maybe one, um, maybe not at all, I don't know, but we're, you know, primarily a firewood, I mean, primarily a chiropractic business, um, but we do store firewood there. Um, in the winter time, my Ford F-250 pulls in, loads up firewood, and takes it to people's homes. Um, and that's pretty much all we do. Um, 
With that being said, I humbly request that you give us a two-year extension so that we can continue to move wood out um, and save enough money where we can either buy a property or rent an additional property to continue with our Boys Twins Timber Company firewood business. Thank you. Thank you. All right. <clears throat> so hang out close. Um, this is in District 2. And so I'll turn it to uh, Commissioner Anderson to lead our discussion. Excellent. And just to kind of, um, before I have the applicant, Mr. Coleman, come back up, I just wanted to see if I could get from, uh, from Jeannie the, just an overview of the staff comments from the planning department on this. And then after that, um, from code enforcement, um, Alicia, uh, if I could get you, but that would be after. So Jeannie first, and you, then the applicant. That, that's kind of my order. Great. Um, the staff has recommended denial for this case. Um, they did not meet the stipulations that were required um, of finding a new home for the business. Elsewhere in the last year, we don't find this as an appropriate location. Great. And, and can you talk a bit about the efforts that the applicant referenced um, to date in terms of, I think he mentioned that you, he was working with uh, planning. Um, are I'm you not, aware of any? I'm not aware of any efforts that the applicant has made. Um, you typically would find properties yourself, um, maybe ask a question about what zoning district would be appropriate, um, but we would not help an applicant find specific properties, only verify whether properties that they have found are appropriate or not. Um, I'm not aware of any communication for that, to that end. Thank you. Thank you. And may I have uh, code enforcement, please? Uh, come on up. Good morning, my name is Yolisa Faustin. I'm from Cobb County Code Enforcement. Um, I went out to the property on May 22nd just for an inspection and I did prepare some photos to share. Um, that's what the front, well, that's what it looks like on um, the tax assessor's record oh, right now. Uh, the issue we have is that the property is zoned for a chiropractic office and not a tree company. He has an active business license for the um, chiropractic office, but not for the tree company at all. So it's two businesses operating under one, and um, there should be another business license as that is an active business. Um, on the property, there are trees being um, chopped into firewood and uh, mulching. Uh, just a year ago when I was out there, I saw the employee out there cutting uh, the firewood into, uh, excuse me, cutting the trees into firewood. While I was out there, um, I met with two employees that were organizing the firewood, and one of the employees did advise me that another company has come there before and dropped off their trees for processing. Um, and due to it just not being um, firewood stored there, we're getting complaints about noise. The property is surrounded by two hotels and also apartments behind, and we have gotten complaints frequently. And um, unfortunately, the hotel guests are not happy with hearing the noise. They said Saturday afternoons when they're trying to rest before going to the um, battery, it's a lot of loud noise there with the um, trees being processed. Uh, that's where the property is located on a uh, winding road. But um, behind, behind the, um, the business is where the apartments are. And then there's a hotel across the street and then another one to the right if you're facing the property. And that's for um, the Best Western Extended Stay and also the Belmont Palace, um, excuse me, Belmont Place Apartments. Um, there is a, a issue that I cannot address from a code enforcement perspective with the fence. He does have up a, a brand new fence, but when you're leaving the business, 
the fence causing an obstruction of vision and being that that uh, property is on a winding road, he doesn't have a mitre corner so that you can see what's coming. You don't see what's coming until they fly around that corner and hit you. So that that is definitely a serious safety hazard. And even with the photo to the right, you can see that the privacy fence is there, but the uh, fire would have stacked so high up that people still have to look at that property and the conditions of it. That's the view from across the street at the, um, the Best Western. And we've gotten complaints about how unattractive it looks over there as well. There's also, um, you know, large machinery for processing the um, trees and everything on the property, which was stated that it's only there for storage and that's not accurate at, at all. So um, from a code enforcement per perspective, we're looking for denial. Um, we, last year we were told that the, the firewood was donated to schools and everything like that. I checked with um, Cobb County Fire and um, you would have to have a permit. And I checked with the schools around Cobb County and they stated that they do not allow campfires onto the property. Today we're being told that it's donated to homeless and other things of that nature. But one thing that I did get today that I didn't get last year, last year we would never admit that it was a legit business. Today it's admitted that it is a business. So um, in order for that um, business to be at that property, it has to be zoned to be there and also should have an appropriate business license as it is, is an active business license. A suggestion I have is that um, uh, Dr. Rick has his property that's under his wife's name and it's 4.85 acres. It is the um, house that sits on the property and then next to it is a lot. He could check with Sandy Springs and see if they'll allow um, him to have the firewood stored on that property since he does have five uh, chiropractic offices and he also has another one in Cobb County in Kennesaw. I had an officer check that property last week to make sure that he was not storing any firewood there and the property is in compliance. Um, unless the board has any questions, that's the end of my presentation. Great. Uh, Lisa, thank, thank you so much for the, um, for the background on, on Enforcement. Could 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 you talk a little bit about? I believe there was in the package a, a letter from I think it was Mr. Han who yes. might have been the owner mm -hmm. next door, uh, and there was some material saying that I think the the sign off that was required was not necessarily from him but rather from an yes. employee. So there was an issue to where. Uh, when somebody, I guess, sent in a petition, they get uh, neighbors to agree or disagree, they, people in support of it. And uh, there was an employee who signed off at night. So if the employee was there, well, the employee was not the manager or the owner. The manager is Mr. Han's mother, and he's the owner of the business and the property. And the issue is that the employee that was questioned was questioned at night, so she would not hear the, the noise and think that everything is fine and you know she said that he's a great neighbor and they don't have no issues over there but she was not there to witness that and the first time that this petition was signed that's um, that's how it got signed because the owner's not agreeing to to the business being there with all that noise and running his guests off. Great, thank you for uh, that additional information. Um, do my fellow commissioners have any questions? Okay. okay. Commissioner Ballon. <clears throat> Thank you, Commissioners. Uh, so you'd indicated this fence as it presently exists is creating an unsafe condition. In your opinion, how far back should it come I, I didn't off? hear you. I'm sorry, sir. You stated that the fence that exists there is creating an unsafe condition. In your opinion, how far back would it have to come in order to remedy to that? 10 feet, 12 feet off the curb, something like that? I am honestly not sure as to how far, because the way the road is going, he definitely, I mean, no, he's not on the right of way. The fence is in compliance and it is six feet, but he definitely needs a mitre corner. And um, the rest of the fence will be fine, but that mitre corner is very important with his um, patients trying to get out of the driveway. Okay, thank you. Any other questions? And I failed to ask if anyone else had questions of Jeannie as well in planning. Any other questions of my commissioners? Okay, great. Lisa, thank you very much. Thank you. That's all the questions for now. And um, Dr. Coleman, can I have you uh, come up, please?
Great. Yes, sir. So um, you, you've had a chance to uh, you've had a chance to hear some of the commentary. Um, can you do you mind? So a couple of the points that I heard were kind of inter that that I'd like a little bit more color on were around um, some of the interactions to date with with planning department. Uh, second area would be addressing the process around receiving approvals or sign offs okay. from neighboring uh, business owners. Uh, third would be just really around the existing operations. And, and just to be clear, I mean, there, within this board, just to kind of say, uh, say it up front, we, there, our considerations are strictly guided by what kind of the zoning criteria. Um, there are some, some other kind of considerations and criteria that are beyond the scope of this board, uh, which you know are not necessarily, I'd say, things that we would prudently admit, <laughs> and, and, you know, admit as considerations in terms of our things that we look at. So what I'm trying to focus on is the things that kind of matter before the board here today. Um, so interactions with planning, process around sign-offs, um, process around um, kind of what exactly are the operations going on there and, you know, how they're operating from a licensure standpoint. Um, and we'll kind of go off from there. Yes, sir. So um, first I'll address the fence. We just put the fence up per what we thought code was for the fencing company. Um, I have not had any patients complain to me. I'm there three days a week at least seeing patients. I've not had any patients complain to me about vision or sight pulling in or out of the property. But if, if she feels like it needs to be brought back, um, we can certainly do that. It'll just take some time. Um, if that would make DOT or her happy, that we're totally fine with that. Um, two is um, we have just started the, uh, what we're trying to do ultimately is, I don't wanna not be in compliance. I, I wanna be in compliance. I wanna have my chiropractic business there. I, I don't wanna have the firewood business there. Um, and yes, you can call it a business, and yes, we have a website, but the money is donated to my boy's 529 account. We're not making money. It's, it, every, all the money we make goes to their 529 account. Yes, we started a website because we thought it was the cool thing to do, but do we have a business license? Are we paying taxes on that business license? No, we do not. I'm sorry. If we need to get that, we certainly can. Um, so my ultimate goal is to move the business. Um, on the getting people to sign, I went to the individual hotels and I talked to what I thought was manager and asked them and they said, no, you guys are great. I mean, they send clients to me for chiropractic care. No, you guys are great. And do you have any problem? No, I'm so sorry if I've gotten any complaints. I, I didn't think I had any because I had never heard of any. Um, I think I had heard of one. Um, we. Um, do occasionally process um, firewood there, um, and that can be a little loud, like cutting down a tree, but that is not all the time. Um, the, I think the main, one of the main issues is it's, it's not, for me to move, one of the reasons why I'm asking for the two-year extension is one, financial, um, to find the proper place and to be able to have the money to do that. Um, I really just got the go-ahead about three months ago from the boss, which is my wife, to move forward and try to continue this. My boys are going into the seventh grade and I'd really like for this to kind of continue to be their thing through high school, you know, kind of this job that they continue to have um, because we have such a great reputation. Um, so my goal is to move, but it would cost me thousands and thousands of dollars if the board or you guys said, hey, you've got three weeks to get, get all the firewood out of there. I mean, it's just firewood is cut and then it is stored for at least two years. If you burn firewood at your house and the firewood doesn't burn, that's because somebody has cut it and sold it to you as what they call green wood. It's not been seasoned. So a lot of our firewood that is sitting there is still sitting there from two years ago because we were not able to move it. So you're talking pieces that are 16 inches this big, but thousands and thousands of pieces. I would have to get in a backhoe. Uh, I would have to somehow figure out how to move it, find a location. So that's why I'm asking for the extension. I don't want to have to come back here in a year or two years. I, I want my 
this business or, you know, whatever you call it, um, I, I want it moved. I, I don't want it there because I want to be in compliance because we have a chiropractic office. Um, I don't want to rezone the building, but it is going to take some time. Um, it's just not something that I can do overnight, a weekend, two weekends. I mean, ultimately, the easiest thing for me is to get through another firewood season, which would be October, November, December, January, February, and see how much more I can get rid of and take that money that's extra that I've made and find a place in 2000 and, well, next year, and then at that point, any logs that are delivered can be delivered to the new place and not to this place. So slowly, our place here just slowly gets cleaned up and eventually everything's gone. Okay. Um, but the, for the business hours, if we have to adjust that, if we need to not do any work on the weekends, we can do that. If the work that needs to be done, the cleanup, all that needs, those hours need to be shortened, I'm happy with that also. If they say, you know, don't do any work, unless you do it from 10 to 5. Um, but we don't do any on Sundays. Occasionally, we do some on Saturdays. I think that was the rule that I could do it on Saturdays. But if we need to take that out also for the neighbors and the hotels, we can do that. OK. So look, just help educate me a little bit on it. Have you, since last year, you got this approval? The issue was you had too much inventory. In inventory didn't move. Have you been accepting inventory additionally since that time? So we accepted some a while back, but we have stopped. All the people we have told don't bring us any more until this gets resolved. Okay. So we have told them no. When, when did you last receive inventory for the site? Uh, three or four months ago. Three or four months, okay. <clears throat> so that was inventory ostensibly in preparation for this upcoming? Season. Yes, sir. Okay. Was any of that inventory you had from before just not usable or? No, so the inventory that we have there now that takes up almost all of our space is wood that was split and has been stored for over a year and a half. Okay. So a lot of that wood is still sitting there um, that's been sitting there for a year and a half. So when I was here last year, the firewood that was there, a, a lot of it is still there, absolutely. Okay. Because last year was just so slow and so hot that we just, we, we anticipated that we were gonna be able to get rid of all of that, but we could not. Okay, got it. And, um, and I have no clue about the, <laughs> the wood chopping business or anything around that. So, so basically, um, when a tree is cut down at someone's house, yeah. they have two options with it. They can take it to the dump or they bring it to somebody right. like me. If they take it to the dump, it fills up our dumps, it, it doesn't, it takes years for it to rot, but they bring it to me and I can cut it into 16 inch pieces, I split it, I store it, and then that's what everybody enjoys by their bonfire pits, is firewood like that. Okay. So it's, that's another good thing that firewood does help with, is that we're saving space in landfills. Yeah, okay. Um, have you made any effort in light of the, I mean, I think the, the document here has been in the public domain um, for a couple weeks now. Have you, given that that's a public document that has the name of an owner who stated opposition to it, have you made any efforts to reach out to the proper um, kind of authorized owner of the site next door that submitted the complaint? To well, I had no back? idea until just now that there was a complaint. Literally, that was the first time I had heard it. Okay. I don't, if I should have been looking on emails or something like that, I, I would have, but I, I had no idea that there was, that the, one of the hotels said it's too noisy or whatever. I had no idea. Okay. Or I absolutely would have reached out. Okay. Thank you. Um, do my uh, other commissioners have any fellow uh, questions? Okay. Um, and one last question I then then I did have is um, I think when last year um, when you were b before the, the board at least the planning commission here one of the things you know, you know you've heard a planning commentary about this use not necessarily being suitable for this location um, could you talk a little bit about some of the efforts you undertook during this past 12 months to find alternate locations 
what that process looked like? Did you engage a third party to look for it, or was it kind of a self-directed process? Because uh, it certainly seems like there are, I see a bunch of sites which seem like they might be suitable, but obviously they tend to be brokered sites. Can you talk a little bit about the process you went through to actively look for alternate locations? Well, my ultimate goal was to, through this last year, uh, October, November, December, January, February, was to hopefully have 90% of the wood gone. That did not happen because of how warm it was. So I kind of started to scramble in February and March and go, oh my gosh, my thing's coming up. So, but I absolutely want to be candid with you and not try to blow smoke, but did we make serious efforts to find a place to move the property to? No, because I was trying to get rid of the product. But I can promise you that moving forward, especially now that I got approval from my boss, my wife, to move forward, that I just need the time and I will make it happen. We, we, will, get the, we will get it out of there. We, we have built up enough clientele and we have a very, very good business name and a good business model that, and people love seeing two 12 year olds show up at seven o'clock in the morning on a Saturday delivering firewood. Um, that they just love that. Um, we are gonna get it moved and we're gonna make a serious effort. Um, the gentleman that I talked to today said, I'll get you in touch with someone from community development. They will help you. They'll help you figure out what kind of zoning you need. I will make an effort. We're gonna make an effort to figure it out yeah. because we can make enough money to keep this going for the next seven years until they graduate high school. Okay. So that's my goal. I, I just hope that you will give me the time to move it because it's, it's, it's a big deal to move all that firewood. Got it, okay. And, and have you gotten any quotes from anybody to actually have all of that moved? No, but I've, I'm an old country boy, farm boy, and I know that you're talking at least 10 to 15 dumpster or uh, uh, containers full of firewood and containers are now $800 a piece. And that's just to get the containers there. And, but to load it and move it somewhere else, I mean, you're talking $20,000 at least. Whereas if I could just have the time and I can then make that $20,000 in October, November, December, January, and put that money towards finding a place to either rent or buy to move it permanently is my ultimate goal. Okay. Great. Um, I didn't have any more questions for you. Just wanted to reconfirm any other questions from my fellow commissioners, okay. And I, I, I will say we, we do have a few pieces of wood that are still there that need to be processed and we can process those, store those, and then we, if, if a stipulation needs to be, you're not gonna accept any more wood then we, then you have my word that we will not accept any more wood at that property. And our goal is, I just need the time to get through this firewood season, get as much moved out as possible. I'll work with Officer Foster to continue to move forward. And then if I have to show that I've, okay, I've put offers on this building or this thing, we can, absolutely. Great, all right, thank you. Thank you so much. I had one other question of the county attorney. In, in situations like this where there's not an active license um, or appears not to be an active license for an operation, it seems like to the extent that there was an approval it would be for use that's not licensed. Is that something where it would be um, within, how does that impact any recommendations we would make? Is that something where it's even allowed, or is it something that has to be stipulated as a requirement to secure a license? The subject before the Planning Commission is just as to the, the zoning or the land use permit. I mean, of course, with the uses, there might be licenses that come and go, or businesses, but that wouldn't necessarily be under the purview or recommendation by this, um, by this board, the Planning Commission. But certainly, I mean, that's, that's something to take in consideration, but if that's what your question is. Yeah, yeah, I was just trying to just, um, in my mind, um, just understand if that's even something where, just given that there's not an active license for the business, probably be a poor. I, 
I think the the um, the evidence presented or the, the information provided from the code enforcement officer speaks for itself. Yep. Okay. Great. Um, and a fine other question, would, and this is probably a, a um, combination of planning. It, for the land use permits, can you remind us again what the minimum amount of time that those can be approved for by this board? I think it's your discretion. Strictly discretion, um, right? Yeah, you can stipulate it. I, I believe the maximum comes in at the two-year mark. Right. Okay. Do any of my fellow commissioners have any additional questions? Okay. So at this time, I'm, I believe I'm, um, well, here's my, my motion. My motion would be to hold this for one month. Um, and the reason why I would hold for one month would be I, I think it's important to for you to have dialogue um, with the actual um, neighboring uh, entities to understand and, and uh, what their concerns are. Um, and I think that that is something where um, just to memorialize that um, would be important. And then I, I'd also feel a, um, a little bit more um, comfort around um, you just having kind of a plan prepared around marketing, um, an arm's length view of what cost of, um, basically a plan for timing, because um, around what would be a reasonable expectation for actually relocating. Um, I don't think that's two years, um, and and I, I still am of the view that the the use here is one where um, ultimately it does as you've mentioned and is one that's probably more appropriate in another location. But I also want to be cognizant of the seasonality of the business and the practicality of the business in terms of making that uh, kind of come into effect. That said, I, so I would say a plan around what is um, a realistic time frame um, for you to actually move um, the existing inventory um, would be something I'd like to see next time. Uh, communication path with the neighboring owner, which is detailed in the staff analysis that was submitted for this case. So confirmation of that. And then, uh, yeah, so the communication, okay. Yep, and, and also I'd recommend, um, was gonna recommend, um, I have another one in mind, but I think I'd hold back on that for now. But yeah, those would be my, my, my motion would be to hold this for 30 days um, to allow the applicant time to go and present those two items or pre uh, present or meet those two deliverable action items. Second. I have a second from Commissioner Ballon. Uh, any discussion? Yes, um, would you add to that that during that one month time period there can be no more intake uh, at the property? That's a brilliant addition. I'm thankful to have a group of people smarter than me sitting to my left and right here because um, I'd forgotten about that. Um, yes, I would also require that there be no more intake. Uh, no more intake during that period. And I would say processing um, over this, during this period. During the one month hold. So, so just to recap the motion, hold for a month. Meet with, the, meet with the neighbor that was referenced, um, prepare a plan around what the timing would look like for relocation of the business. And then the third element would be halting any processing or intake of a new inventory, or in, in, processing of any existing or new inventory and intake of any new inventory. Any, <clears throat> excuse clarify, me, any, is, that, is that part of the motion? I think the motion is just to hold. hold but you have provided recommendations to the applicant. That's what I took. Yes. That. So. That, that, well, that would be, I'm sorry. I'm not understanding. Are those conditions of the whole, or are you saying there's going to be something separate? That would be a recommendation of the whole. Um, clearly, to the extent that those are violated, that's obviously a point that can be considered next time. Um, but it, it, given that it's not actual discrete condition of the hold, the hold would be just for 30 days for 
and with the recommendation for those um, those three items to occur. If, if that's no. part of the motion, and it, it sounds, I, I think no. it sounds like it is to some extent. No. Just to clarify, whether it's just to hold the issue in 30 days, and you're providing just some general recommendations, or you're you are wanting as part of your motion for actions or non-actions to occur or not to occur that will be part of consideration at the next hearing. I just want to make sure that we are clear as to the record and if, if there is direction that is part of the motion that will be relied upon the, the whole, in the, July. The no processing. Okay. That's the condition. Okay. She gave a condition. So the condition, one condition on this would be no processing or intake of inventory. Correct. The two other items would be recommendations to the applicant. To the applicant. Yep. <laughs> Is that yeah. okay? Yeah. Clerk, y'all, do y'all have all that? Very good. All right, uh, let's call the question. Um, vote of four to zero to uh, hold <clears throat> uh, LUP 11 until uh, July, the July hearing. Thank you. We need to go back uh, <clears throat> to a case and revisit uh, Commissioner Dance's case, Z8, and restate uh, that motion. We need to clarify when we talked about the split zoning. So if we could revisit that. Mr. Turn. Chairman, I believe what we're going to recommend is a motion um, to amend something previously adopted at this hearing and, and just to clarify what that m motion that was. Can we do that all in one? We need a motion to, re to, motion to amend something previously adopted and then to restate the motion that will be adopted as well. Got it. So, be two, so two I'll entertain a motion to amend uh, something that we previously adopted first. So moved. Got that uh, moved by Commissioner Dance. Do I have a second? Second. Second by Commissioner Ballon. Uh, let's call the question on that. So vote of four to zero to amend uh, the eight, which was previously adopted, and so now can we have a restated motion of that from Commissioner Dance? Yes, I would at this time move to amend uh, the prior motion on Z8 to clarify that the recommendation for split zoning is in accordance with the concept site plan submitted on May 19th to the Cobb County Zoning accompanying the applicant stipulation letter of the same date. I'll entertain a second. Second. A second from Commissioner Ballon. Any discussion? If not, let's call the question. So a vote of four to zero to recommend approval of Z8 with the new amended motion. Got it. Okay. All right, our final item is Other Business 2 of 2023 to amend the following chapter, articles, divisions, and sections of the official code of, the, of Cobb County, Georgia. Chapter 134, Zoning, Article 1 in general, Section 134.1, Definitions, Article 2, Administration and Enforcement, Division 1, Generally, Section 134-32, Procedures for Conducting Hearings, Division 3, Board of Zoning Appeals, Section 134-91, Creation, Section 134-93.1, Hearing Notice, Section 134-96, Appeals from Decision of Board, Division 4, Rezoning or Land Use Permit Applications, and Section 134-128, Appeal of Decisions on Land Use and Special Land Use Permits. Thank you. Members of the Planning Commission, this is a uh, proposed code amendments to Chapter 134 in pursuant to House Bill 1405 from 2022, in which the legislature enacted, the governor signed. And what it does is it is it clarifies how certain decisions from the Board of Commissioners and the Board of Zoning Appeals are treated in terms of appeals, zoning applications versus variance applications, the differences between what may be considered legislative and or quasi-judicial. Uh, how the appeals would be treated or conducted, um, whether new evidence can be presented and or whether only a record would be submitted upward. This is all part of House Bill 1405, and we're bringing our code into compliance uh, with that language of that House Bill. 
These are not textual amendments, no changes to any district regulations. This is only as to, to certain notices and to how appeals are to be handled and treated from decisions of the Board of Commissioners and or the Board of Zoning Appeals. Thank you. Um, I will open it up for any, are there any discussions or questions for a uh, county attorney? Okay, if not, that's the end of your presentation. And so this would just be a recommendation. The Board of Commissioners will be considering these code amendments uh, in next week and in, at the end of the month. Okay. So um, do we need to entertain a motion to approve? And I will do that now. Sorry. So moved. Do I have a second? Second. Second from Commissioner Ballon. And uh, is there any discussion? If not, let's call the question. Vote of four to zero to recommend approval um, of the uh, check of the amendments of Chapter 134 of the Cobb County Code. All right, we have two other orders of business to get through. The first, uh, we need to approve the minutes of the zoning hearing uh, from May 2nd, 2023. I'll entertain a motion to approve the minutes. So moved. And a second. Second. Second from Commissioner Anderson. Uh, let's call the question. Minutes are approved. Second, uh, we have the minutes of the special call meeting agenda review work session from May 22nd. Uh, do I have a motion to approve the minutes? So moved. Second. I have a second from Commissioner Anderson. Let's call the question. Vote of four to zero, the minutes are approved. Uh, with that, if there's no other business, we are adjourned. Thanks.